Open your ears to the world with the ABC Listen app. Join Yumi Steins as she delves into taboo topics in Ladies We Need to Talk. If I straightened my hair, I was fitting in. And if I didn't, then I was suddenly sort of a black panther or something. Or immerse yourself in the life of someone else in conversations with Richard Feidler and Sarah Konoski. I remember hearing this tremendous roar and then the boat was literally picked up and thrown upside down. Open your ears to the world with the ABC Listen app. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Old rivals took a clash at an empty MCG for the first time on Grandstand AFL Sunday afternoon footy. 129 years of history between Collingwood and Carlton in 1981. The last time these two sides faced off in a grand final, there was 112,000 in attendance this afternoon. It will be all on the line in front of just the teammates and the officials. Hello and welcome to Grandstand AFL on ABC Sport. I'm Matt Clinch alongside Corbin Middlemass to call the action. No late changes for either side with Kayla Poulter and Lockie Fogarty. The uh, medical subs for both sides. The scene is set in uh, grey and overcast conditions in Melbourne. For it should be a relatively even contest this afternoon. Corby, welcome. Thanks, Clinchy. Finals may seem a little way away, but just ask any Carlton or Collingwood fan if you can score a victory over the other in these kind of seasons. It always just counts for a little bit for supporters of these two teams. Of course, they did meet back in round two. It was a 21-point victory for Collingwood that night. A bit of added emotion, an emotional week for uh, Carlton with the sad passing of Sergio Silvani. Of course, the uh, figurehead of the Silvani family played 239 games between the late 50s and the early 70s. So Carlton with the black armbands tonight. His famous number one being worn by his grandson, Jack Silvani. Of course, his son, uh, Jack's father in Stephen Silvani, the fullback of the century, such a famous Carlton name. So um, our thoughts with the Silvani family this week. Absolutely. Your experts today on Grandstand AFL, Brett Delidio, welcome. Thanks, Clinchy. Corby, good to be here. Uh, interesting to see what uh, Carlton side we get today. I feel like they've been a little bit up and down sometimes. They're starting to build, but I also like what the Pies are doing under Rob Harvey. We've seen a couple of stats during the week where they've really started to turn around their performance at uh, getting the, the ball moving a lot quicker, getting a chance you know, to their forwards, getting it in there. We've also seen Jordy to go. He's been a lot more time in the midfield, so that's been enjoyable as well. But uh, I reckon they can nearly get it done. Sam Walsh is probably the key figure, isn't he? Uh, Rama inside that Carlton midfield. Adam Ramanaskis joins us on a Sunday afternoon. Rama, welcome. Yes, thank you. It's uh, very weird. Carlton Collingwood at an empty MCG. It's usually heathing with people, but... Today, obviously, lockdown in uh, in Victoria and nobody here, but it's, it still should be a good game. I've, I've been really impressed with Collingwood over over the last couple of weeks. Really changed their game, really playing on quickly now. The best last quarter team since Robert, Robert Harvey's came um, came on as, as coach. The Blues, they, they keep teasing. They just keep teasing. This is a game they should win today. Paddy Cripps out is, is a big loss. No doubt that Sam Walsh is the absolute key for, for Carlton today, particularly in the midfield, but... Who now comes in and picks up the slack for Paddy Cripps? Is there is there a player that yeah, that Carlton fans want to come into the middle of the ground and, and have more opportunities? So uh, Paddy Cripps has been a mainstay for a long time in that midfield, but he'll be sorely missed, but it gives a great opportunity to somebody else. The final member of our team is in the front row of the grandstand this afternoon. Mitch Cleary, welcome. Good afternoon, Clinchy. Good afternoon, team. One of nine people in the seating bowl today. I can count four uh, officials at either end of the ground that will go and collect the balls. And apart from that, it's pretty quiet down here. Jacob Wiedering winning the toss as skipper for the first time as Carlton today. He's going to kick to the city end. The starting subs, Caleb Poulter for the Pies, Lockie Fogarty for the Blues. Dark skies above, but hopefully the radar suggests only scattered showers throughout the afternoon. And for Carlton fans, Mitch, uh, Charlie Kernow able to get through his first game in sometime a scratch match in COVID times. More than two years since he's played any sort of competitive footy, clinchy, a scratch match between Carlton, Collingwood and Hawthorne players today. Really positive sign. Three quarters for him. They're going to play him two or three games at that level before he considers an AFL return and, and maybe in the last uh, couple of weeks of the AFL season, but really positive signs for Blues fans earlier today. Good on you, Mitch. Mitch Cleary on the boundary this afternoon for ABC Sport. Corby's been counting the long sleeve jumpers. Ooh, Does that out. influence tips? Uh, up to five lids. Yeah, too many for Bawley. He yes. would say three's the limit. So who are you tipping lids and Rise rounds? off the back of that. <laughs> well... <laughs> Essendon won a grand final in 2000. I think five players were wearing a, the long sleeve that day. So I'll yeah, take I'll one t- of my old coaches who told me off. <laughs> I'll take the, I'll take the Blues today. But you look at that midfield; it's Stocker, Kennedy, and Sam Walsh in there for the Blues. So 
I think Kennedy's going to get more of that responsibility through the middle of the ground today. So round 18 of the AFL, Collingwood and Carlton from the MCG in an empty stadium. Here's Corbin Middlemass. Both teams in their traditional jumpers. Collingwood in the black shorts. The yellow Sharon whacked into the turf and it's Grundy and Deconing in the middle. Deconing favoured by the bounce. Palms it down to Goey. Dispossessed. Little soccer works out okay for Grundy. Kicks to centre half forward. Sard intercepts. After the spoil from Plowman Hat. Links up with Williams who kicks out to half back and Stocker takes the mark against the boundary line. Right half back. Kicks down the wing. Mackay up strong and takes the mark. Leading rough into the footy. Marks defensive side of the wing. Into the corridor. He comes by foot to Paddy Dow. He gives the hand pass to Williams. Streaming past. Gets a bounce on the member's wing. Long ball to Old Silvani. Inside the forward 50. Can't juggle the mark. Eddie Betts, beautiful pickup. Couldn't get boots a ball to clear Madgen. And off his body, it ricochets out of play. Carlton going to the city end in this opening quarter. A throw in in the right forward pocket with the Blues. Deep in attack. Silvani starting... In the goal square in that famous number one in the long sleeves. Throwing back in. Grundy in front position. One oh, down the tap against fantastic. Mackay. Beautiful to Pendlebury who links up with Maynard on half back. Kicks around the wing. Cameron up with one arm. Worked under the footy by Taconing and the ball goes out of play for a throw in. That was beautiful by Brody Grundy. Probably something, an area that he's been criticised with his, with his hit outs to, to advantage. But that was perfect to, to Pendlebury. It's an early midfield. Uh, Kennedy alongside Walsh and Dow in the middle around the stoppage and from the hit out Dow first to collect for Carlton hand pass to Walsh kicks along the boundary line crisp but competing in the air but Silvani the juggled mark at the first touch of the mark paid so Jack Silvani with his right calf heavily strapped he kicks to the hot spot 30 out from the Carlton goal Mackay flies whack down to Kennedy of the Blues hand pass over his shoulder Dow back onto it collects but retreating sends a hand pass back forward to Kennedy still 60 out hand pass to Silvani spears the kick Nunes marks lays it off to Kennedy kicks into Quainor ricochets back into Collingwood's grasp Elliott away to Adams now to Crisp hand pass to Degoe at centre half back where he's got Bianco free on the outer wing and gathers on the southern wing. He's just got Majek and Wiedering in front of him. Takes a second bounce. Ignores the Majek lead and decides to turn back into the corridor. Chips it back to Chris Main. Marks under the great southern stand wing. Inboard he comes to Jack Crisp. Having a great season for Collingwood. Crisp looks to send Collingwood into attack towards, well, side bottom was the target. But Wiedering, as he does so often, floats across the front and takes a good uncontested mark. He's releasing kick to Ed Kernot, left half back. He gathers just inside the boundary. Almost turned it over, Main Got fingertips to it. Oh, he's with a hand pass to Sarden. Here go the Blues around the southern wing. Got it to Walsh. Walsh looks up to half forward. Kicks towards Harry Mackay. One, two. Couldn't pull in the mark with rough head right there. And Quainor clears for the Pies. No score after three minutes. Finds Degoe with some more midfield minutes. Kicks across the ground to Pendlebury. Marks back edge of the centre square. Held up by Nunes. Up says it's all okay. Pendlebury comes out to the members' side. And Noble takes the mark. And three minutes without a score. Noble out towards Adams in the one-on-one. -on -one. Not a great kick. Kennedy intercepts and he's away and running the other way. Lays a hand pass to Stock for Carlton. Away to Silvani. Missed him by hand. Maynard invited in. Can't control the footy. Stocker back with it. Tackled. Lost it. Tapped away to Silvani, still no clean possession. Here's Noble, under pressure, shoots a hand pass back down the wing. Stocker puts his head over it. Now Dow spun around in the tackle. Turnover a minute at the moment. Degoe releases Brown, who's through traffic. Brown trying to find the right option. Forward and then slipped over. Hand pass wide of the Coning to Degoe, who cleans it up for Collingwood. In the middle of the MCG, rushes a kick inside 50. Zach Williams overran it, opened the door for Elliott, who can run into the open goal and put through the first of the match. A bad error from the Blues. Boom recruit. And Jamie Elliott makes them pay. Collingwood one straight six to Carlton yet to score. Four minutes gone in the opening term. With Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio. He would have a go at explaining that, Litz. Oh, oh, I'm just trying to watch the replay, Raman, to see. It looked like he had great position, didn't he, to go at it. And it just it took a crooked bounce on him and it's gone right around him. He couldn't change direction, but... It looked like it was a lay down was there for an easy uh, exit 50, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it looked to me he just didn't get low enough at, at the ball there. So he's worried about the pressure of Elliot. But you take the ball back to centre center wing here, and it's just a real scrimmage. There's bodies flying around everywhere. There's handballs going to opposition. And the cleanest player through that was Jordan Degoe. On two occasions, he was able to take the ball and clear the ball and get it inside forward 50. I'm sure somebody's writing a thesis, thesis on this, but we have seen 
the games without crowds this weekend. Just the game's been very, very scrappy affairs and uh, the disposal quality's been pretty low. The bounce back in the middle. There's a free kick. A ruck infringement. It's going to Conning, uh, De Conning's way in the middle. And he'll take it for Carlton. So a bit of go forward out of the middle here for the Blues. As De Conning, some hesitation, and then sends his long left footer in the direction of Mackay. And standing underneath that main takes the intercept mark. Centre half back for the Pies. Swings it across the back flank to Degoe. Up against the boundary line. Kicks down that southern side. Just skids inside the field of play and keeping it alive. Hoskin Elliott tries to pull his kick back inboard on the 45. Williams intercepts. Sends Carlton down the wing. Nice pick up Martin for Carlton. Hand pass away to Walsh. Kicks to Dow. Mark set a half forward. Hand pass to Petrevsky. Seaton on the run from 40. He misses. Out to the left and a behind. For Petrevsky Seaton, so Collingwood one straight, Carlton one behind, six minutes in. Seeing a real willingness here from Carlton to keep the ball moving, aren't we? They're flicking it on, keeping the ball in motion. Maynard brings Collingwood back into play, chips it to Main in the back pocket, returns it to Maynard. By foot, who marks still inside the defensive 50, lobs his kick over the defence, a good pass that finds Noble, has it in front of Williamson at left half back. Collingwood by five points after six minutes of the MCG. Noble looks to use his foot skills to advantage. Kicks long towards Grundy. He'll fly against De Koning and also Wiedering. Ball comes down to Sybottom in front. Round the boundary line, trying to kick around Plowman. Kick for Cameron, spoiled late by Jones. He's seen out of play. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Clinchy, something to warm the hearts of all Carlton fans today. Cade Simpson in the cap. He's wearing uh, the purple today as runner for the Blues, I believe, the first time. Matthew Bode previously uh, has taken that role for much of what I've seen this season. But uh, the 300 gamer, Cade Simpson, after retiring last year, taking on duties as runner. All over it, Mitch. One of the best in the business. Thrown back into play. Grundy knocked it down to the t- front. Dow onto it for the Blues. Hand pass to Petreski. Seaton lost it. Cal Brown tackled. Got a hand pass away, though, to Grundy. And now to Murphy at left half forward. Kicks inside the 50. Elliott out on the lead. Juggles almost the mark. Two, three grabs. Almost couldn't hold it as he hit the turf. Side bottom tackled. And the umpire will throw it up 40 metres out from Collingwood's goal at the punt road end. That'd, that'd be worrying, that matchup, I think. Plowman and Elliott, it's, he's, he's going to have too much speed for Plowman off the mark. Grundy wins the tap. Possession, though, falling away. The Blues, hurried kick from Williamson out of the defensive 50. And intercept mark for Trey Rusco, who takes it for Collingwood. And the bright pink boots, members wing. Pumps Collingwood deep back inside 50. Top of the goal square through the hands of Cameron. Wittering had a Ooh. play on it. Jones scoops it up. Hand pass Ooh. to Williams. Hurried kick. Turnover. Straight to Murphy. And Williams just chucking it on the boot. Top of the defensive goal square. Nathan Murphy, an uncontested intercept mark. 40 out left half forward. Well, it was good work to actually get the, the, the gather there and spin out of trouble. But then he was just under immediate pressure again, wasn't he? And... A quick dump kick like that. If it doesn't clear the 50, it always comes into trouble. The wingman playing his role gets himself a shot on goal. 13th game, just one goal in his career previously, and he won't get a second here. He shanks it awfully across the face of goal. Still alive, top of the goal square. Side bottom can't run onto it. He's run down by Petrevsky seaton Stocker gets the clearance out towards half back. Kennedy couldn't juggle the mark. I think Walsh has been baited. He had second hands onto it, but the umpire... Perhaps didn't see that, and Sam Walsh to have it at right half back. Averaging over 30 disposal this season. Up to the members' wing where Ed Kerno marks. Got it to Williamson, wide to Harry Mackay, who marks just inside the boundary. Scott Owies deep. Looks to send it more into the corridor. Asking a bit of noon. Sport away, Bianco. Charging on what Martin is tackled. Can't burst clear. And the footy locked to his chest. The umpire will throw it up. 35 metres out from the Carlton goal at the city end. So with Cripps not playing today, Jack Martin is the player that I'd like to see go through the midfield a lot more today for the Blues. Grundy wins the tap. Kerno trying to get boot the ball. Can't. You can throw a blanket over around 20 players here. Umpire circles and says ball up. Still 25 out from Carlton's goal at the city end. Thick grey... Skies overhead, but no forecast for rain, which is good news during play. Mackay wins the tap. Kennedy for Carlton. Hand pass into the pocket. Always trying to run onto it. Khan bounce favours Cottrell. He's wrapped up by Crisp. And a ball up, forward pocket. Still 20-25 out from the Carlton goal. Get some repeat stoppages here inside 50. It's the Pies by five points early after nine minutes. A lot of players around the stoppage. Grundy taps it towards the boundary line. Petreski-Seaton slipped over. Brown trying to break his way through. Tackled by Kennedy. 
Umpire circles and will throw it up. Congratulations as well to Brett Rosebury, who umpires his 450th game. 21 years in the business, having made his debut in round 13, 2000, 44 finals and eight grand finals. Well played. Ed Kerno tries to spy it towards the top of goal. Walsh flies, can't come down with it. A chance for Rusco. He's got the footy hold, held to his chest by Owies. Umpire gives him the benefit of the doubt. We'll throw it up. 35 metres out from Carlton's goal. It's the Pies by five points. Grundy hooks it down behind. Kennedy tackled immediately. Dispossessed. Grundy hurried hand pass straight to Fisher. Hurried kick goalward right to the behind line. It sits up and eventually helped through by Maynard. And a rush behind for Carlton. So they've got two of them. Collingwood a one straight. 11 minutes in. Brett Rosebury, long time he was the player's favourite umpire. Wasn't he, was. he seemed to be very popular with the yeah. playing cohort. He was. Very good umpire. Main brings Collingwood back into play. A long kick towards Grundy into Koning. Cleared the pat. Stockers hand pass to Petreski. Seaton at half forward to Kerno. He screws it back inside 50, but Main unmanned. Takes an uncontested mark into the middle of the crowd. Looking for Majacek. Never got to him. Williams takes the intercepting mark for Carlton. Rather than going forward, he squares it up to Newman, who looks inside the 50. Kick smothered by Bianco. Majacek onto it. Kicks it forward. A chance for Collingwood to break with speed. Henry has it. Oh, he turns it over straight to Zach Williams, who marks in the middle of the centre square. Four-point lead for the Pies. One straight to two behinds. 11 minutes in. As Williams comes out wide to Silvani, marks at half-back, kicks very wide. Walsh and Kerno, and Walsh leaves it for Kerno. Mentioned earlier the strapping on Silvani's calf. That's actually a shin guard, of course, doing some of the ruck work today. As Kerno puts it to the hot spot, Mackay competes, can't mark, spills down Collingwood's way. Rusco to Adams, away to Maine. By hand to Murphy. G pushed or met solidly by Martin as he disposed of the footy. Ump says it's all OK, and his kick finds Dugowie, who marks at half-back for Collingwood. Dugowie goes short, steel side, bottom takes it. Jordy Dugowie's last three weeks, 32-32. 29 uh, disposals and a goal. Showing that he can combine the midfield craft with getting on the scoreboard as well. Side bottoms long kick towards Majacek. Excellent mark in the pack. Wiedering could do little as Majacek flew and crashed the pack. An impressive contested mark. He has it between wing and half forward on the members' side. Turns onto his right-hand side. Puts it long into the 50. Camera the target. Henry in from the side takes the mark. No, but he flew. No, uh, there for Carlton. Go, yeah. The to... plowman was coming hard. He but was. He just didn't get there. Well, it was good penetration in the Majacek kick, wasn't it? I thought it, uh, he was aiming for camera, I think. But uh, lack of defensive pressure on Henry just from Walsh, I think, just allowed him to fly and take an easy mark. It's some, one of his strengths. Oliver Henry in his fifth game, one of seven debutants for Collingwood this season. Looking for his first goal. What a way it would be to start. And what a kick to finish. Pumps his fist as John Noble comes in to celebrate. That's one to remember to start your career. Oliver Henry, the Geelong Falcons product, had to force his way into this Collingwood side with 10 goals in five VFL games. He's finally got his first goal in AFL footy. And Collingwood have a 10-point advantage. Two straight 12 to the Blues. Two behinds. Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio are with you. Well, it's certainly taken him a little while to, to hit the scoreboard. He's come in and played a, a little role up forward, and they've been struggling at times, the Pies, but uh, always nice when you get your first run. I can remember mine vividly on this ground way back in 2005. But uh, well done. Nice contested mark, and then to slot it right up against the boundary, drop punt, knocks it through. It's the start of many more to come. Set shot or on the run, Liz? Mine was uh, a snap from uh, yeah, the city end one. It dribbled through, bounced over a number of heads and went through. <laughs> Amazing goal. They all count. And Rama? Subiaco, 2000. Handball over the top, Joe the Goose in the goal square. Perfect, nothing better. I'll well, stand by better to kick one like that, Corby, than uh, Jamara <laughs> trying to dribble one through on the goal line where he missed it last yes. week. Far better yesterday with these three goals. Ten-point lead for the Pies. Free kick in the middle. It's going Adams' way. So puts him inside 50 again. Henry the target. It goes over his head. Elliot mops it up at the back. Hand pass to my check. He's run down. Nice work, Wiedering. Ball still doesn't go out. Elliot keeps it alive. Hooks the kick for Collingwood. Back to the hot spot. Murphy competes. Spills to Newman. Set a half back for Carlton. Gives it to Dow. Dangerous hand pass over Check to it. Kennedy. <laughs> Runs onto it. Kicks into an open front half. Ugly bouncing footy. Ruffhead keeps it in front of him. Mackay st- overruns. It bet soccer's at once, soccer's at twice. Goalward bouncing footy close to the behind line and oh, almost through it goes. Always 
inventive trying to whack it back between his legs and in the end it ricochets off main shins Jeez. and through from behind. It's that Kennedy kick there going inside forward 50. Eddie Betts had probably five or six metres on his direct opponent and it was just a mongrel kick going inside. Main brings Collingwood back in, short to Brown and then out to the right back pocket where Rusko takes the mark. He squares it up to Pendlebury. Collingwood with four or five disposal to get outside the defensive 50 where Crisp now gives it to Adams. Long kick to the members wing. Cameron has the mismatch against Silvani. He gets a free kick. Probably would have juggled the mark though. Looks up. Majek on the lead. Has five or ten metres in front of Jacob Wiedering but he's probably outside scoring range. Wiedering 55 metres out on the mark. Maybe not. Well... It'll take his very bell. Well. The call play on now, so it's not going to be... Eddie almost runs him down as he puts it towards the teeth of goal. Looking for a flyer. Jones from behind brings it down to the front where Walsh is tackled by Henry and Sybottom. And the umpire will throw it up 35 metres out from Collingwood's goal at the punt road end of the MCG. Collingwood by nine points through 15 minutes. Both Lids and I spoke about Sam Walsh at the start of the game and somebody needing to go to him. But at the moment, he's had only the four possessions. But it just looks like it's... It's just man-on-man, man, really. No real tight tag on Sam Walsh today. Grundy taps it down to Callum Brown. Gets back on his right boot. Kicks to the hot spot. Double-fisted spoil from Jones into the lap of Newman. So Carlton back with that last line of defence. Hand pass to Sardo. He's back in the short sleeves already. Kicks out to half back to Owies. Hand pass under pressure. Reaches oh, down. Yes. He fans off one beautifully. Links up with Fisher. Carlton cutting through the middle of the G. Kicks across the ground. Betts takes the mark just forward of halfway. Looks into an open forward 50. Chips short. Finds Cottrell. Front edge of the centre square. Forward 50 started to fill up for Carlton. He swings a hand pass wide to Newman. Trying to get back onto his left. Hand pass back to Cottrell. Ugly high entry inside the forward 50. Rough head flies. Whistle on the play. Free kick. And an illegal block going the way of Collingwood and Quain ought to take it. So Harry McCoy had the one-on-one there. Yes. He just didn't lead at the kicker. He, he just stood there like he was in the schoolyard just telling him to kick it long to me. Got to lead at the kicker. Give him an option. Oscar Elliott works it up to Murphy at halfback and now to Grundy running the southern wing. Takes a bounce. Kicks to Majek who took the mark and he's off. Inside 50. Oh, as the goals. It's not his best ever. It's out on the full. Missed everything to the right. Go quick. Collingwood by nine points. Interesting those inside 50s, Rama. Carlton 11 to 9. Well, yeah, they, they're just but very inefficient going inside their forward 50, Clinchy. So they need to they need to work out another option. So they're looking for Harry, no doubt, but Roughhead's all over him at the minute. Wiedering off halfback, kicks along the Mackay on the wing, goes over his head. So Rusko, first one there for Collingwood. Hand pass to Quainor. He goes back by hand to Madgen. High up and under down the southern wing. Kennedy taps it to Walsh's advantage, gives it back to Kennedy. Floats a kick in the Mackay direction. Again, the pressure from Ruffhead can't mark. And Quainor back the other way for Collingwood. Sends a high kick to half forward. Wiedering with the fist, just spoils it 20 metres in the other direction. Dow collects. Hand pass picked off by Ngoi. Comes charging through at half forward for Collingwood. Runs into trouble, hands it back to Hoskin Elliott, chips it wide, and Dugowie, who keeps on moving, takes the mark up against the boundary line, 45 out at right half forward. Jeez, he's a bull, isn't he? When he decides that he wants to tuck it under his arm and break a, a tackle, he manages to get through. But I like his follow up as well. Not only did he feed it off again, but then he went hard and got inside 50 to be a target. Had seven touches already in the game. And seven scoring shots the last time these two teams met in his 100th. Degali from the sharp angle, he misses to the near side of behind. Now the Magpies are 2-1, Carlton are three behinds. Of course, they were wayward against Geelong last Saturday, which feels like a long time ago. Collingwood by 10 points, 19 played opening quarter. At 2.13, the three-quarter time. And Saad brings the Blues back into play. That's a nice kick, finds Kennedy on the defensive 50 for Carlton. And he looks up. Walsh offers the lead. Crisp tries to come late to spoil him. Made body contact, but Walsh has been paid the mark. If not the free kick, it did hurt him. Slow to rise. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Just an issue down here with Jack Nunes of the Blues. He's copped one to the hip, getting some treatment from the doctors. A couple of painkillers. They're just going to take him down to the rooms for a bit more assessment. Walsh pulled his kick, found Sam Petreski seating on the members' wing. Short pass, advancing it to Cottrell. Still on halfway for the Blues. We trail by 10 points. Cottrell's going to go back to Wiedering. Acting captain, 
In Patrick Cripps and Sam Doherty's absence into the middle of the ground. He finds Saad. Bit more intent now. He turns and kicks high inside 50. Silvani and Quainor. Quainor in front position. Silvani trying to work him underneath it. Martin gathers. Gave it back to Jack Silvani. Deep in the left forward pocket. He snaps on goal. And puts it out on the full. So both sides have struggled to find their radar early. 20 minutes gone. Collingwood leading by 10 points. Mentioned Walsh after that last marking contest. Just coming off the ground. We'll get down to Mitch to see how he's travelling. Five touches so far. The Carlton start. Third year blue. The third year player in the competition is Madgen. Out towards half back. Pack there for Carlton. They all fly. And Martin in front of them comes down with it. 70 out at half forward. Puts Carlton back inside 50. Hand on it from Silvani. Slips to Crisp's, adva Crisp's advantage though. It's hard to say fast. He gives it to Adams who goes back to Roughhead. And comes out wide to the members side for Collingwood. A one-on-one. -on -one. Cottrell and Thomas. Thomas collects. Cottrell takes him out of play. And a boundary throw in just forward of the wing for Carlton. A 10-point lead for the Magpies. Time on opening term. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Uh, any update on Sam Walsh? He looks OK. Just uh, taking a few heavy breaths, but he's uh, had to speak to the uh, the coaches and David Teague upstairs, and he's all good to go. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Brett Delidio, Adam Ramanaskis, your experts. Matt Clinch and Corbin Middlemass call the action on ABC Sport. Noble for Collingwood. Kicks towards Elliott. Arms outstretched. Takes a good mark in front of Plowman. He finishes on top of Collingwood's number five. So it takes a while to get to his feet and then kicks with the right boot inside. 50 towards Cameron. It clears the pack. Racing back. Williamson for Carlton will get there. On the last line. Looks up. Has oh. nothing on offer. To, to kick through from behind. Trying to kick back to Wiedering. Pressure maybe got the better of him in that moment. Well, he went to his left foot, Williamson, yeah. but there was two Collingwood <laughs> players out there. So he had to turn back. Uh, probably a smart play in the end, really. He didn't mean it, clearly, but he was going to... It was a risky little kick that he was trying to make. Collingwood by 11. So long kick out of the defensive 50 from Williams. And Grundy takes the intercept mark in that launch pad 70 out. So Collingwood lock it inside. 11-point lead for the Magpies. And goes short to Dugowie. Dugowie marks front edge of the centre square. He just kicks... To the hot spot and Williamson's back takes the intercept mark, moves it immediately. Hand pass out to Kerno. A little fumble made it tough. Pressure from Maynard. Loose footy, 70 out from Collingwood's goal. Maynard clever. Taps it to side bottom's advantage. Spun around. Goes back by hand to Pendlebury. Pendlebury kicks inside 50 straight to Walsh. Both teams now lids. Yeah. Really wasting opportunities going okay. inside their forward 50. 13 apiece inside forward 50 now. Two goals, two to Collingwood, three behinds only to, to the Blues, so wasting opportunities. Walsh into the back pocket to Wiedering and then up to Martin. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. So Jack Newton's downstairs with a right hip complaint. The bigger concern at the moment for the Blues is uh, Adam Saad. He's got a right ankle, getting treatment from three physios down here. I'll keep you posted. Thanks, Mitch. Eddie Betts comes up with it on the wing for the Blues. Got it to Cottrell, kicks towards a one-on-one. -on -one. Silvani worked underneath it. Jack Crisp takes the mark for Collingwood. Looks at options into the corridor. Decides to continue around the members' wing. Sets it towards Grundy and Cameron. Collingwood have the tall timbers there. And Grundy just as ease took the mark. Breaks away now from Jones. Looks to kick inside 50. Well, they had two options. Henry or Elliott in the end. Elliott left it for Henry. And he takes the mark on a 45-degree angle. 35 metres out from goal. Well, you called it early, Rama, about uh, Jamie Elliott and his match-up that he's got with Plowman. Seems to have far too much bounce. We had Wiedering at that stage. It's only just a really easy move. Cut back at the kicker. Wiedering was all at sea. Just completely left him. And Henry doing the same to Williams. So having kicked his first goal in AFL footy, only a few moments ago, a chance to add his second and extend Collingwood's lead. That's a beautiful finish. The Collingwood Magpies skip out by 17 points. 3-2-20. To Carlton, three behinds, 23 minutes gone in this opening term on ABC Sport. You're with Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio. So you look at the stats now, we're, we're, we're 25 minutes into this quarter, but they're all reasonably even. Contest of football, Collingwood plus five. Clearances, uh, Carlton a plus one. Inside 50s, they're all pretty even. But what Collingwood are doing is they've probably been a touch more efficient going inside. Oh, I know I mentioned before, both teams wasting opportunity there. But, yeah, you, it's a good point there. You, the kicking efficiency of both teams there leads Collingwood to go on at 70% and the, and the Blues at 65%. So I, I think Carlton are really breaking down across half forward at the moment. They don't have a Terry Mackay or nothing. 
at the moment. So they need to find another option across their half forward line, the Blues. Mitch Cleary telling us an ankle complaint for Sard and a hip complaint for Noon. So down to two healthy bodies for the time being on Carlton's bench as uh, DeConing shares it in the ruck and then gets the clearance. Bangs it to centre half forward. Spills down up the Quainar. Spoiled towards uh, Rusco. His hand pass and turnover. Fisher intercepts for Carlton. Hand pass away to Kerno. Goes back to Walsh. 55 out at half forward. Across the half forward line to uh, to Newman, loads up, kicks it from 55 out, Silvani in front of the behind post, got hands to it spills out of play and a throw in forward pocket for Carlton, Mitch Cleary on the boundary. So Jack Nunes with that hip back up from the bench, he looks right and ready to go, Adam Saad with the right ankle, he's just doing some run throughs at the moment still in a little bit of pain but they're just working through that one at the moment Carlton deep in attack, Mackay took it out of the right hand pass towards Kennedy up against the right behind post, he can't keep it in play as he's tackled over the boundary line by Callum Brown for a boundary throw in. Carlton three behinds, going with 3 2 20. 26 minutes gone, opening term and an empty MCG. Toss back into play. De Koning does the ruck with this time against Grundy, clears the pack. Fisher's kick is smothered though. Still a chance for the Blues. Maynard just taps it clear, trying to get to the advantage of Chris, but ricochets off Dow. Onto it, trying to charge his way through past Murphy. Probably threw it, got away with one. Martin trying to charge his way through. This time he's taken high. And the Blues will get a shot on goal late here through Jack Martin. Yeah, and it was high against Degowie. So he deserves this. Jack Martin, he was the cleanest in that contest. The ball's bobbling. He, he loses his mouth guard too in the in that <laughs> contest. So he's really earned that free kick. Geez, they need this one, don't they? Yeah. After all their steady. worries they last need week. Steady. So five goals, four for Jack Martin. Hasn't kicked a goal in his last two games, but a chance to strike gold here for Carlton ahead of quarter time. Jack Martin after the quarter time siren comes in 40 metres out directly in front. And kicks the goal. So some much-needed momentum for the Blues after the siren of quarter time. And they cut Collingwood's lead back to 11 points with their opening goal. 3-2-20, the Magpies to Carlton, 1-3-9. For Collingwood, the goals have come through two to Ollie Henry and Jamie Elliott, the other goal scorer, with Jack Martin scoring for the Blues there late in the quarter. Great to have your company on this Sunday afternoon on Grandstand AFL on ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. This year's origin has been dominated by New South Wales. Intercepted by Latrell Mitchell. Bye-bye, New South Wales, a 95-metre try. Can Queensland salvage something from the wreckage? Capewell dummies and Kurt Capewell Boma. Or will the Blues make it a rare, clean sweep? The 2021 State of Origin Series on Grandstand Rugby League. On your radio, ABC Sport Digital Radio and on the ABC Listen app. Game, set. The 2021 AFL Premiership Season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Right option forward and then slipped over. Hand pass wide to Koning to Dugowie who cleans it up for Collingwood. In the middle of the MCG, rushes a kick inside 50. Zach Williams over at it, opened the door for Elliott who can run into the open goal and put through the first of the match. Side bottoms long kick towards Majek. Excellent mark in the pack. Wiedering could do little as Majek flew and crashed the pack. An impressive contested mark. He has it between wing and half forward on the members' side. Turns onto his right-hand side, puts it long into the 50. Camera the target. Henry in from the side, takes the mark. Looking for his first goal. What a way it would be to start. And what a kick to finish. Dow onto it, trying to charge his way through past Murphy. Probably threw it, got away with one. Mark trying to charge his way through. This time he's taken high. And the Blues will get a shot on goal late here through Jack Martin. Jack Martin after the quarter time siren comes in. 40 metres out directly in front and kicks the goal. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. So Collingwood with the opening three goals of the match before Jack Martin was able to strike truly for the Blues ahead of quarter time. Collingwood by 11 points. 3-2-20 to the Blues, 1-3-9 earlier. It was Essendon by 18 points over North Melbourne, having trailed by 10 points at halftime. The Bombers came flying back 13-14-92 to North Melbourne, 11-8-74. Zach Merritt finished with uh, the three votes in the ABC Football of the Year following his 39 disposals. Stringer and Peter Wright. Stringer with four goals, Wright with three, while uh, Larky with three for North Melbourne. And coming up 
next around uh, 4.40, so in a bit under an hour's time. Uh, the West Coast Eagles in action against Adelaide. A big out, Josh Kennedy out for the West Coast Eagles. And the final match of the weekend's footy, GWS and Sydney from the Gold Coast getting underway at 6.10 Australian Eastern time. Ahead of uh, Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio, Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Two injury concerns during that first quarter for the Blues, Clinchy. Firstly, Jack Nunes with that hip. He's just got some padding around his hip, sort of kidney area. He looks to be okay, but they've uh, strapped him up for this second quarter. Adam Sale with a right ankle. He's just gone through a few fitness tests with Andrew Russell, the head of fitness down here at the Blues. He's at the huddle, so it looks like he will start this second term. The thoughts of Brett Delidio and Adam Ramanaskis on the opening term. Yeah, I think, look... The Pies will be very happy with where they're at. I feel like the Blues, when they go back and review this game, they've had a couple of defensive breakdowns there that cost them those goals. We we spoke about the Zach Williams one, and he had great positioning on Jamie Elliott, but just didn't do his work enough earlier. The ground ball, then no pressure on uh, Ollie Henry deep in the the pocket out there. No pressure on him to to allow him to fly for an easy mark. And then a little uh, confusion breakdown, whatever you like to call it and just allows a nice uncontested mark for Ollie Henry, whereas the Blues, when they're going forward, they just haven't really had an opportunity to isolate Harry Mackay. He's been flying against, you know, Roughhead's doing a great job, but Maine's been dropping off in front of him, and we've seen Maynard do some good work down there as well. So I think, you know, the Blues, if they can clean that up, that I think they're well and truly well within this game. It's just that goal certainly helps them. Ramak going into quarter time, I think they've that uh, will give them a little bit of a lift. Uh, going in with yeah. zero zero three at the start of uh, the second is can be a lot more deflating than one three that's for sure. But they are certainly with well within the game. The Blues they just need to capitalise and clean up their skills a little bit more and be more efficient going forward. And I, I, like I mentioned during that call, I'd love to see Jack Martin come up onto the ball. I think they need a little bit of a spark there. They need uh, Jack's very clean. A very clean player. We saw that at ground level there. He, He's, he's the cleanest player. He's able to draw a free kick and kick a goal after the song. I think the go is becoming a real problem now for Carlton. Yep. He's bullocking his way through the midfield. So I think when he does come into the midfield, uh, Ed Kerno needs to go to him. They need Someone needs to be responsible for him. He's He's got this newfound fitness, Jordan, to go, which it's like he had an injection of fitness over the last <laughs> couple of weeks. It's He's, he's fast. He, he can run now. In the past, there was... Get the ball out of the centre bounce or, or zero through yep. the middle of the ground. So now you, you're seeing pushing. So I think somebody needs to be responsible for him, for the Blues. The other the other end here for the um, for the Pies is their forward structure is worrying Carlton. Yep. I don't think Carlton have got the matchups right. Plowman doesn't look right um, for Elliott as it stands right now. My check is starting to get out on the lead. Yep. Uh, on Weeding. Weeding is dropping off, yep. trying to play as an interceptor rather than going with Majacek on the lead. He needs to stay with Majacek because Majacek's getting up to 70 or 80 metres and taking marks and being able to turn and roll. Our thoughts of Adam Ramanaskis on ABC Sport as we're ready to get the second quarter underway. Collingwood leading by 11 points. Bounce favours Grundy up against Taconi. One down the tap, got it to Taylor Adams. Feeds the hand pass back to centre half back. To Maine, who has enough time to gather. To Quaynor, turn to the southern side. Swings back now to the corridor. Got it to Grundy. Cuts past traffic nicely and then kicks up to Majek, who takes the mark on the lead. Just to the left of the two centre circles. Feeds the hand pass back in more to Grundy. To Elliott on the lead. Lost Plowman there. He's got Hoskin Elliott all on his own as he waltzes inside 50. And he'll take the mark in the right forward pocket. Well, I hate it, to tell you, so, told yeah, you so, you <laughs> crystal ball that one, didn't you, Rama? But that uh, might be coming. Uh, that is my check on the lead out in front of Weedering. Jamie Elliott, too good for Plowman in his work. And then Will Hoskin Elliott, as you know, he can yeah. do up and down the wings. Just having his set shot now with a nice angle. Let's get to goal in six of his past nine games. Will Hoskin Elliott, and that's a nice finish from the right forward pocket. So Collingwood able to waltz through the middle of the ground and keep the opening goal of the second quarter. This is just a, a minute old. 4-2-26 to Carlton, one 3 9. Some of your thoughts on the SMS as well. Karen from Sunshine, come on Collingwood. Uh, John's also said Carlton are the away team today. Should they be made to wear their white jumper? It's not easy on the eye. We've had a few messages saying that the two jumpers are a bit hard to pick. How have you guys found it? Um, no issue. No okay. issue. No. I, I thought you might say that. Right? More white would make it more challenging, I would have thought. Yeah. And Grant from Waterloo in, in Sydney, um, great to have your company. As always, go Blues. And, yes, for all those in lockdown in Melbourne and Sydney, hopefully the radio 
can provide some comfort for you this afternoon with the Blues trailing by 17 points. I love that Isaac Quainer is playing on Eddie Betts. I, I think it's a great... Ex- I know Eddie's in the twilight of his career, but he's still very dangerous. Quainer's a young player finding his way in this game. He was involved in that first passage of play where he was able to win the ball at that halfback flank. Pies by 17, back in the middle to Coney. Knocks it down, but there's a free for a hold. It's coming away from where the footy was. It's going uh, Kennedy's way. It's against Adams. He's got his hands outstretched almost to signal to the umpire what on earth was that for. But Kennedy's going to take it, and Carlton are headed forward. As he looks for Mackay, runs underneath the footy. At the back of the pack, Madgen slaps it down to Main. Hand pass to Noble. He pulls his kick beautifully to Quainor, who marks back flank for Collingwood. Kicks to halfback. And skidding in. Bianco takes the mark for Collingwood. First time we've called his name as he sends a hand pass out to Rusco. Kicks down the member's wing. Elliott takes the mark on halfway. Turns, moves it quickly. Meyer check back with the flight. Collides with Williams in the air. There's a free kick. It's going to go Carlton's way. Williams still lying <laughs> face down on the ground. Uh, it's a high kick inside 50. Williams in the box seat. He went to spoil. Magic just for a moment, took eyes off the footy as it was coming in. He didn't want to go there, Zach Williams, but in the end he had no choice because the ball got too close to him. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> got up holding his backside as well, so he may have got yeah, a got pretty big corky. severe corky yeah, in all no that. Doubt. I was going to say, I don't think he can kick the footy. So it gives the hand pass to Wiedering, who switches play across the defensive goal square in the city end, and Stocker takes the mark. So Collingwood have been slow starters in their last three weeks. They managed just a goal last week against Richmond, who booted four. Been on the wrong side of the two previous ones. We know they finish well. Collingwood take it back on half forward. It comes to Noble, who juggles and then kicks inside the 50. Majek with a couple of metres on Wiedering. Juggles the mark directly in front, 45 metres out. And, and I say this about Majek and Wiedering. Wiedering's had a terrific year. Yes. But he's been able to sit and wait and intercept. Now... He hasn't really come up against the guy that's hit up at the ball hard. So in the opening quarter, now the opening four minutes of this this quarter, all my check's doing is just hitting up at the ball continually. So Wiedering's expecting the ball to go. To Clearly it's a tactic of Collingwood to look for my check as much as possible. Collingwood's leading goal scorer this season with 25 off a step. That's a nice kick. Brody my check joins the party. With a long-range goal, and Collingwood stretch it to a game-high 23-point advantage. 5-2-32 to Carlton, one 3 9. It's been all one-way traffic. You're right. It might be nearly worthwhile, you know, with uh, Mychek's ability to get around the ground and just hit up. He's, Go to Jones. Well, that's it. You've got to change it up because I think Cameron's going to be that one that Weeder can play off yeah. and just stand there, you know, it's going to be bombed in on his head, wrestling. That's his strength. Someone who motors around the ground. We know that's what the Brody Majek's one would. He's just we've seen already in the first you know quarter and a little bit that he's just not keeping up, is he? And they're, they're going to keep going through Majek, which Colin would love to do, and he's going to continually give them an outlet. And so far, it might be worthwhile. We're seeing Jones sit in the goal square on Cameron. Maybe it's time to swap that one up. You just look now at Carl's defenders. They're confused. They're pointing. Who should be on who? You know, side bottoms now come on. Dugowie's now gone down to the goal square. The Blues are really struggling to work up their matchups in their defensive 50. It's just the eighth time in 17 games that Colling would have kicked five goals in the first half. So uh, the scoring's happening for them early in a way that it has in all season. Grundy gets a quick clearance to centre half forward, but picked off, and Williams bangs it back in the other direction, and that's a turnover. Main takes the intercept mark. Half back for Collingwood. Comes wide to Grundy, who marks. Right in front of the interchange. 5-2 to 1-3. Collingwood with a very nice recent record against the Blues. They've won their past five against their arch rival. He goes back to Maine and Maine short to Noble. And Carlton winning just two of the last 14 between these two teams. They're all of a sudden 23 down here, the Blues, six minutes into the second term. Noble kicks towards Cameron at half. Forward takes almost an impressive mark. He's paid it. And Josh Thomas has been counted into. Yeah, that that oh, they've clashed heads. And uh, Thomas is still down, still side bottom checking on him as the trainer comes out. So he has rolled onto his back, so he's conscious, but clearly clashed into his head there, oh, getting into the wrong yep. spot at the wrong time as uh, Cameron was crashing to the turf. Oh, so right on the cheek. Yeah, yeah play's going to be stopped here for a moment or so as. The doctor leans over Josh Thomas. 
shows how brutal and, and dangerous our game is. I mean, it, for everything the game's done to try and reduce concussions in the game, and this is obviously just a, a head clash, and we'll get a further it's update. Just but a pure accident. Yeah, and we, we saw yesterday Dan yeah. McKenzie laying a tackle. Yep. His head bounces yeah. off the turf, yep. and concussion obviously ensues as a result. And he's been helped off by the trainers now, Josh Thomas. So Collingwood by 23 points. Darcy Cameron has it at right half forward for the Pies. And he looks to send Collingwood into attack once more. Puts it towards Brody Grundy. Jones flies uncontested and takes the mark in the back pocket for Carlton. Switches play out to Ed Kernow. He's got room to have a dash. Looks to drive it towards halfback. Martin used his body well. Got rid of Maynard. The hand pass to Walsh. Here go the Blues with some speed. Got it to Silvani. Sidesteps around Madgen. Now back to Walsh at right half forward. Not a lot further afield, so cuts backwards. And gives the hand pass to Martin. He's in two minds as well. Off a step. Kicks a high ball towards Silvani. Outnumbered. Hoskin Elliott flew. Dropped the mark. A chance for Nunes, though, for Carlton. Tries to knock it back to Walsh. He's tackled. So, and the umpire will throw it up at right half forward for Carlton. So Walsh and Martin are on that wing. Perfect. No worries. Then they look up inside their forward 50. They've got Eddie Betts and Sam Petreski seen to kick to. And three Collingwood defenders who had just transitioned back really well. 23 points, Collingwood's lead. So ball up here, half forward for Carlton. Uh, Cameron grabs it out of the ruck, high up and under. Kennedy uh, at the drop, hands it away to Walsh, gives it to Cottrell, centre half forward for the Blues, kicks inside 50. Quainle looking at it, uh, Betts back with the flight, neither mark, pack forms around them. Betts extracts it, stands up, hand pass back in board to Petrevsky seaton Still no clean possession, sock it away by side bottom at the centre half back. Saad though, first one there for Carlton, hands it to Fisher, kicks to the top of the goal square. Hands on it from Roughhead. It slips to his teammate, though, in Madgen, and he'll kick wide. And Majacek marks it half back for Collingwood. He kicks towards Pendlebury, runs into a vacant southern wing, takes the mark and keeps striding forward. Looks towards to go on 50, kicks it wide of him. Plowman in front will gather first. Gets the hand pass to Stocker. Kicks across half back for the Blues. Finds Cottrell. He can advance it in the middle. The kick was just wider. Walsh. He's got enough time to gather. Feeds the hand pass out to Colonel on the members wing. And then kicks up to Owies. Getting there late was Maynard. He didn't have to spoil it out of play. And a boundary thrown at left half forward for the Blues. Mitch Cleary. Josh Thomas being taken down to the rooms after that heavy hit. The good news is that he walked off on his own accord. Caleb Poulter, the medical sub for the Pies, just warming up. We're waiting to see the uh, outcome of uh, Josh Thomas. Collingwood by 23 points. To Coney, one down the tap to Petreski seat, and he kicked blindly. And across his body, kicked it straight to Chris Main. He's been the loose in defence on a number of occasions for Collingwood this afternoon. He goes short, and Noble has it at right half back. New two-year deal for John Noble during the week. Up against the boundary line here in the yellow boots as he kicks down the wing. There's another whistle on the play. There's a hold. And it's going to Harry Mackay. Don't need him up there, though. No. It's just defensive side of halfway. Members wing. The Calma medal leader with 48 for the year is Mackay. Down to half forward. Always looking to climb. And gives away the free kick. Didn't make contact with the footy, and now he's trying to claim the free. In fact, he's going to get it. And his arms pulled down in the air, according to the umpire. So, oh, he's who went for the climb onto Chris Main, gets a free for it. And he's 55 out at left half forward. And just about every player on the ground is inside his forward 50. So, oh, he's just kicks it as far as he can to the goal square. Bounces down to Betts. He throws his head back, wanting to free, won't get it. And on the behind line, it's helped through for a rush behind. So 22 points Collingwood's lead, 5-2 to 1-4, about 11 minutes into the second turn. You can hear the effects of the players. Vocal with no crowd into the MCG. Maynard brings Collingwood straight down the middle to Brown. Out pass to Sidebottom. They're cutting through Carlton's defence. Kicks towards Henry. He's on the break at right half forward. Couldn't pull in the mark. Saad got their weight, but over around the footy. Henry back onto it. Saad laid the tackle. Got the hand pass to Elliott, who kicks into the pocket. It's not a good kick. And in the end, Bianco was worked out of it by Dow. Got the hand pass to Kennedy. And Carlton are out of defence through Nick Newman. Kicks up to Silvani. Main over the top. And spoils it out of play for a boundary throw in. Collingwood by 22 points, Mitch Cleary. Quincy, you spoke about hearing the uh, players' effects. Well, spare a thought for them. They can hear your call from down here. It's that, it's that quiet down here. So, <laughs> What are you trying to say, no, Mitch? No, it's, it's brilliant. And, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> beep, they, they are beep, enjoying beep. it. <laughs> 22 points, Collingwood's lead. 11 played in the second term from the boundary throw-in to Goey. Got a hand pass Ooh. from Grundy, and he's out of play. He's not happy by the treatment either from 
Cottrell, a bit of push and shove. Yeah, well, they need, they need a little bit of that, Carl. They yeah. need to show a bit of spirit at the moment because Collingwood are all over them. Physically, um, skill-wise, the way they're moving the ball, they can't have a fight a shot yet. Silvani gr- uh, rocking a pose to Grundy. Grundy wins that. A hit out down towards uh, Walsh. Hand pass off his back. Down the wing finds Kerno. Kerno takes on Noble, the tackler. Somehow got it out. And then Kennedy's into his back. So a free kick to go Collingwood's way. It'll be taken by Callum Brown. And he links up with Noble. Noble gathered after an initial fumble. Kicks inside 50. Majacek could have been held. Spoiled to the front. Elliott onto it for Collingwood. Out pass to Sybottom. Busts the tackle of Cottrell. Then dropped the footy. Cottrell got him. Somehow squeezed the kick inside oh. 50. And Henry takes the mark. Good what hands. a game he's having. His fifth game of AFL footy. Having not kicked a goal before today. A chance to kick his third before half time. Oh, I don't know. Like, Sybottom swung around 360 degrees. Yep. So it's like now you can wait until you swung around far enough to you see a, a little option that you like before <laughs> yep. you... Well, it, they eliminated oh, that a yeah. few years ago. I think that's holding the ball. I would have thought so. Yeah, I, I think there's plenty of opportunity if you swing him around in a circle. Oliver Henry in the right forward pocket, only about 25 metres out. Can he think he's through it way through this one? He misses to the right-hand side. His first blemish. Collingwood lead by 23 points at the 13-minute mark. Of the second term. Five goals to one. And Carlton's only goal came after the siren at quarter time. Nick Newman on the kick out. One of seven lefties in this Carlton team. He goes long out to half back. Silvani up. Can't come down with it. Spills underneath him. As uh, Adams passing through wins it for Collingwood. Hand pass away to Pendlebury to the gully. Back to Adams. Hand pass away to Rusco on the wing. High up and under inside the forward 50. Wiedering waiting out the back. Takes the mark. 30 out from his defensive goal. 23-point lead for Collingwood. 14 played in this uh, second quarter with the floodlights taking effect. Wiedering looks up to the members wing. Harry Mackay offers a long lead. It didn't get to him. Ed Kerno brought it down. Noble knocks it out. Cameron had an arm pinned. He somehow got rid of the footy. It's taken out of play by Tom Williamson for a boundary throwing. Collingwood by 23 points. 5-3-33 to the Blues. 1-4-10. Magpies having led by 11 points a quarter time. Kick the only two goals of this second quarter. Cameron having a run in the ruck against Silvani here. Wins down the tap. Ed Kerno sharks it though to Petrescu Seaton who lost it. Maynard onto it for Collingwood. Drives a high kick inside 50. Jones comes charging out. Plowman couldn't take it from behind. A couple of taps to it. My checks hand pass looking for Henry. He was tackled and just dropped the footy. Walsh trying to knock a ball clear. He can't do so. And Plowman is locked up just inside 50 for Collingwood. Magpies by 23 points. Supporters of these two teams will be pleased to know that Essendon beat North by three goals and the Bombers are in the eight. They're actually seventh. They'll be there at the remainder of the round. The Pies leading Carlton near by 23. Ball up at centre half forward for the uh, Pies. Spits out in the direction of Dow. He is pushed off it. Hoskin Elliott collects it. Hand pass to Pendlebury. In tight, his hand pass turned over as Fisher comes up with it half back for Carlton. Hand pass away to Noon. Short kick to Petrovsky Seaton. He marks southern wing, lays it off by hand to Nunes. A bit of open play, kicks it straight into oncoming traffic. Hoskin Elliott smothers, ricochets back to Nunes. Hand pass to Petrovsky Seaton, hands it to Fisher. Kicks to centre half forward for Carlton. And Martin out to meet it, takes the mark inside the centre square. Kicks his lat- laterally and Stocker has it. Oh, into oh. the pocket. Ed Kerno had scooted all the way around the back and then decided to come into the corridor. So he missed him, turned it straight over to John Noble. Summer Carlton's connection inside 50 has been well off. Harry Mackay has played up the ground a lot. As Noble goes short and Murphy has it. Comes inboard to Crisp. Finds him just wide of Owies. And then a precise pass to Bianco. All still inside the defensive 50. Collingwood trying to find the outlet. The kick to Main. He marks it left half back. The Magpies by 23 points. Chip it back inside 50 to Magic. So right now, we're halfway through this second quarter. Carlton have only laid 14 tackles for the game. Collingwood have laid 28. Through patience, they find the loose, although Quayna ran into a dead end. Great tackle, Jack Martin. And the Blues win it back on half forward. Footy slow to be returned to him. Now it is. Hand pass to Stocker. Running start from 50. He's put it through. 
The Blues have their second at the 17 minute mark of the second quarter. And it took a great defensive act from Jack Martin to result in the goal. Collingwood 5 3 33 to the Blues 2 4 16. Adam Ramanaskis on Grandstand AFL. Well, Liz, that's the formula. Yes. You put some physical pressure on the opposition, they're going to turn it over at the moment. All Collingwood are doing is moving the ball from one end of the field to the other. Now, five goals, three to two goals, four. Now, 15 tackles only for the Blues. That one's a crunching tackle. Yep. What happens? What's the result of it? A goal. It's a simple game, isn't yeah. it? You put a bit of pressure on the opposition, force them into an error, get yourself a chance. There was a little bit of a breakdown, I think, from the high half forwards from Collingwood. Not keeping the pressure on Stocker. Glad he's got rid of the grippo from this week. Otherwise, that was probably going out of bounds on the full after last week's attempt. That was one of the more funny things I've seen on on the footy field. But great, great goal from him. Nice finish. Always good when you're a half back and you can get on the end of one. 21-year-old with just his second goal in his short AFL career. Bounce back in the middle to Coney Waits for it. Taps it down. Petrovsky Seaton tackled. Lost the footy in the process. Free kick. Callum Brown. And the Pies will win it back out to the centre square. Pies by 17. And now 50. It's going again. It's Petrevsky Seaton. I'm not sure that was a zone for uh, Matty Kennedy. Yeah. So, it, so Matt Kennedy in the zone? Yes. Come past the mark. Couldn't get out of there quick enough. Petrevsky Seaton was wondering what it was for. Short chat with the umpire. And now Brown, 55 out, lays it up top of the goal square. But Liam Jones, the only man heading up to meet it, takes the intercept mark for Carlton. He lays it off to Stocker. Kicks out wide. Nunes the target. Caught at the back. Murphy competes. Falls front and centre. Saad links up with Nunes. Got the hand pass back to Saad to Williamson. Tackled as soon as he took possession. And pushed over the boundary line by Murphy. Collingwood by 17 points. Now Mark's been in touch from Bell Reeve on 0437 774 774. Just wondering why... Jack Silvani's in the side, so giving a few thoughts there. And, and Grant in Hobart wondering, are there more players acting for free kicks this season? I'll get Rammer and Lidz's thoughts on that in a moment. Grundy emerges from the clearance, kicks inside 50. His kick is wide of Elliott and through for a minor score to the right. Collingwood by 18. Well, it's probably something that I don't pay too much attention to, to be honest. With, okay. the, with the acting. Oh, I saw there was another player, I think, that got fined again yep. for it, so... Stocker goes long straight down the pipe from the kick out, but it's coming back. Spills to Henry, who's been excellent. Kicks to set a half forward for Collingwood. There's another free kick. It's going Carlton's way. Oh. And Saad's going to take it. He goes short to Petrovsky. He's saying it's not 15. He's tackled, taken to ground, and umpire Rosebury says, I'll have it. Well, one, oh, one umpire called play on, the other called a mark. Gee, ball up here, 40 metres out from Collingwood's goal. Right half forward, Pies by 18 points, approaching time on in the second. Grundy into Coning once more. Saad was able to shark it, got it to Williamson. Bumped as he got his kick away by Tagoe. Long ball up to Harry Mackay, spoiled away by Roughhead. Front and centre on it, Cal Brown, hand pass. Put uh, Trey Rusko under enormous pressure, he lost it. Fisher tried to shovel out a quick hand pass, missed his teammate. Now becomes the tackler on steel side bottom. The umpire to throw it up on the member's wing. Trey Rusko just thinking that he's just going to stroll inside 50 there and bang <laughs> one through, I think. Mate, no, there's going to be someone on your back. Harry Mackay is having to come a long way to find some footy. Collingwood by 18 points. Fisher's hand pass. Pinched by Brown. Collingwood work it back through. Noble to Chris. Now to go. He wants the one-two with Maynard. He's all the way back at centre-half back. He retreats further back to Roughhead. They're giving up ground. Hand pass to Rusko. He's tackled by Betts. Gets the hand pass to the loose Maynard. And they do find the avenue out to Quainall. He lays a hand pass off to the running Maynard. Kicks it in this side. The centre circles. My check marks. Hand pass to Crisp. Slick movement from Collingwood to half forward. And Hoskin Elliott marks. Short kick. He straightens up. And guess who? Ollie Henry marks 20 out directly in front. A chance to kick his third. Well, I wasn't sure that one was meant for him, the Corby, but right place, right time. He's making a bit of a habit of that at the moment, isn't he? Which is good. Nice ball movement. One of this little hit up in the middle of the ground, flick it off, get it going quickly. Get your half backs involved. Nice and open. Their top pick in last year's draft, wearing the famous 35 on his back. The 18 year old skips in. He is having a day. That's his third for Ollie Henry. Pick 17 in last year's national draft and Collingwood's leads back to 24. 6-4-40, Carlton 2-4-16. 
time on second term uh, before our experts, Mitch Cleary, on the boundary. Josh Thomas still down in the rooms after that heavy hit earlier in the term. Caleb Poulter, the medical sub, on the bike. The medicos have given him the nod to, see, uh, to keep warming up. Looks like he might be in the game any moment. It's becoming ball movement now with Colin. And that's on the back of, of Carlton's little pressure, lack of pressure. So you know, at halftime, when they, they're still another, another six minutes in it. But they, they need to regroup the Blues really yep. quickly at halftime because... If they don't, if they just allow Collingwood to continue to possess the ball as they are, the margin will bloom really quickly uh, in in this in the second half. Because once you stop applying pressure, it's just easy. It's easy for the opposition to move the ball to to whatever part of the ground they need to. Adam Ramanaskis with you on ABC Sport. Grundy into Coning in the middle of the ground. To Coning one down the tap straight to Walsh. He's tackled by Taylor Adams, and the umpire will do it once more. Walsh leading possession getter for the Blues with 16. Grundy wins down the tap for Collingwood. Adams head over the footy cup. Burst his way clear against Martin. And Walsh now on the bottom of the pack. Umpire lets it go for a few moments to see if the ball will come clear. It won't. And he'll throw it up. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Clinchy, Caleb Poulter's jumper is on. The jacket is off. He's ready to come into the game. Josh Thomas subbed out with concussion. Thanks, Mitch. Grundy wins down the tap. Takoe can't break clear. All of a sudden, it's become a contested battle. And they haven't moved from the centre circles. That head clash for Josh Thomas earlier in the quarter was friendly fire in a marking contest. Just uh, bumped heads with Darcy Cameron. So he was a little dazed making his way off the ground. And as Mitch tells us, he's now out of the game. Another stoppage in the middle. Sam Walsh, last one up with the footy. With 16 touches, the chief possession getter on the ground. De Koning wins the tap. Oh, he's hands it to Walsh. His hand pass ends up with... Uh, Noble, he's worried out of it. Loose footy collected by Kennedy. Hand pass away to Petrovsky seat and sells some candy. Kicks to centre half forward. Off hands again. Still no clean pick up. Oh, he's charging through. Grabs it. Tumbles a kick. Goldwood, wrong side of the post. Oh, he's missing to the right. A minor score. Collingwood by 23. 6 4 to 2 5. 23 played second quarter. Brayden Maynard looks to bring Collingwood back into play. Dashes out of the full-back line. Long ball up towards Grundy. He lands awkwardly to Koning. Came over the top and now Wiedering takes it at left half back. Grundy very slow to rise, so Wiedering might have to wait to take his kick here. Landed heavily. He's up and moving, so Wiedering can take his kick and advance it forward. And Nick Newman has it. Just 10 strides in from the boundary outside 50. Scott Eddie Betts free in the pocket if he can get it to him. Rafed playing in front of him. Puts it long towards the goal mount. Silvani's there. He's outnumbered, but he's rising high and stood his ground to take an impressive mark. He was the meat and the sandwich in between two Collingwood defenders. And Brody Grundy grabbing in the back of his head would normally be on that goal line. Well, there's your answer, Mark, from Bell Reef, mate. That's why Jack <laughs> Silvani is in the, uh, in the side. He, this is what he can do. He's probably had an almost day so far couple of chances to really uh, take a couple of clunks down the line, off it a bit up forward, but when he does get his chance, he usually sticks them. Jack Silvani following the passing of Carlton Legend surge during the week. He comes in directly in front, 25 metres out, and keeps the family legacy carrying on in that famous number one that his father and his grandfather wore. An important goal for the Blues. After Carlton, after Collingwood had got it out to a 24-point advantage, it's back to 17. Collingwood 6 4 40 to Carlton 3 5 23. 25 minutes gone, second term. Yeah, no doubt it would have been a, a tough week for Jack and, and the whole Silvani family. He kicks the goal there and he gave the armband a kiss and, and pointed to the sky. So you, you can you can actually see he's a little bit emotional yep. from uh, from kicking that goal. So uh, you know it, good on him for being out here uh, today, really. So uh, but as much needed, much needed goal for the Blues. Harry Mackay can't catch a cold at the moment, so they needed somebody else inside their forward 50 to, to take a grab. Silvani was able to do that and convert. 54th goal of his career for Jack Silvani. As the boys touched on, there are very few that will probably mean as much to him as 
And then a big week for him, back in the middle of the ground. No one gets a touch on the footy. Eventually, it's knocked away to Petrovsky. Seaton coming off the square. Turns and kicks inside 50. Mackay crashes the pack, spills down the main art of the Magpies. Hand pass to Roughhead. Betts tackles him. Lost it. Betts hand pass wanted to get it to Mackay. Maynard steals it. Hand pass out to Crisp. He links up with Penderbury. Wild kick out wide, wanting to find Rusko. One on one with Stocker. Stocker lays the tackle on Bianco. Slips out the pole to the sub on the ground. His hand pass down the wing. Finds Crisp. Goes back out wide to Rusko in front of the interchange. He goes short to Bianco. Has it sent away on the members' side. Collingwood leading by 17 points. Time on in this second quarter. Inboard looking for Pendlebury. Ed Kerno sported away. Rusko with a hand pass to Poulter. He's tackled immediately by Walsh and can't break clear. The umpire will throw it up on the members' wing. Poulter into the action with Josh Thomas subbed out. Friendly fire from Darcy Cameron in the marking contest. Peter from Hampton also asking about Eddie Betts. who got collected in the jaw as uh, Trey Rusko tried to brush the tackle. He stayed out there, though. Ed Kerno on the wing for the Blues. Kicks towards Silvani, outmaneuvered. Imagine takes the mark for Collingwood at right half back. Been a little banged up today, sub. With an ankle worry early and a hip complaint for Nunes, but back out there in the sub, unused Lockie Fogarty at this stage. As Madge and Long down the wing, and Deconin takes a nice intercept mark in front of the pack. Hand pass away to Stocker. Kicks Carlton back in front of the interchange and Kennedy marks. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Zach Williams is copying it left, right and centre. He had the right hip complaint early in that uh, sec- early in his second quarter. Now he's just getting some attention. He's copped another knock. They're going to have to stop play here. The he comes Cameron actually stole direction. the umpire to stop play there. Given Zach Williams isn't moving. I think he copped the knee right in the back from his own teammate and Liam Jones. The corky early after the collision with Majacek, and now straight in the middle of the yeah. back. Don't you love those? <laughs> oh, you know you're alive then. <laughs> <laughs> he's moving very slowly with the dock towards the interchange. So more on Zach Williams throughout the day. Williams and off halfback kicks to Silvani, the most recent goal kicker. He's got it right on halfway. 17 point lead for the Pies. Silvani hurried into his kick, floats one to the top of the goal square. Eddie. Betts, great use of the body. Shakes <laughs> his opponent, on. takes the mark. <laughs> it's play on. Got up quickly trying. I don't think he thought the mark was going to be paid. And in the end, the umpires <laughs> paid it. It's play on, Lee. It has to be. What? And so, Betts tried to play on off the ground. See, so I feel sorry for you, Ed. No, no, you didn't hear the whistle in time, so I'm going to give you another shot at it. I don't understand that, but that's okay. He good, was, good guys don't always finish last. Well, he was lying on the ground and tried to kick it away when he was lying horizontal on the ground. And the umpire paid the mark, and so now he's going to get to take his kick standing vertically. And he bets, snapping, and he's kicked it. Betts puts it through in his baggy shorts, and a goal for Carlton brings the Blues within 11. 29 played second term. Carlton making a bit of a charge. They kicked three of the last four. The Magpies 6-4-40, Carlton 4-5-29. Uh, half hour mark, second quarter, Adam Ramanaskas and Brett Delidio. Well, regardless of that decision, Ramad, I was watching Eddie Betts there. He was the only one who was moving, but he was go- had his back to the ball, moving back towards goal, and it forced Jack Silvani to try and kick a torp on the run to actually get some distance to get it somewhere near him. So I'm not sure where big Harry Mackay was at that time. We're looking for him just to be that presence. He was the rover. He Okay, <laughs> yep. Well, that, that would understand why they've been so dysfunctional. <laughs> there he uh, is there at the front of the back. He's going front and centre, big <laughs> Harry. That's not your job, mate. Parole reverse. Uh, Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Zach Williams down to the rooms, Clinchy, with the kit bag, with a few doctors gone down with him, which usually means some sort of pain assistance coming his way. I'll keep you posted. Thanks, Mitch. So Carlton closed within 11 points, getting close to halftime. Grundy went down the tap. Adams couldn't emerge with it. To Coning onto it, got it to Kennedy. Kicks Carlton inside 50. Harry McCoy in the back, couldn't complete the mark. And Quainor at the back swoops onto it. Great pressure. Petrescu seat and gets the smother. Just lifted. Forces a throw in. I criticised the Blues only those 14 tackles. They're now up to 24. So in the last uh, 10 minutes of this quarter, they've really lifted their pressure rating. Blues into attack as the ball's thrown in. Mackay doing the ruck work. Got it down to Walsh. Squeezes the kick towards the goal mouth. Bouncing offline. And it bounces through to the left-hand side for a minor score. A 10-point lead. Half an hour gone in the second quarter. Did get out as wide as 24 points. That was also in time on in his second term. So the last two for Carlton. And now it's back to 10. Roscoe marks the kick out back pocket. Looks for Quainor in the corridor who marks at centre-half back. 
They can do a slower play. Collingwood after a really high play on percentage earlier. Goes short to Maynard. Maynard back across the half-back line to Madgen. He chips further afield to Noble. In front of the great sub and stand, John Noble's going to play on. Runs past Martin on the mark. Kicks up into the front half to left half forward. Plowman leaping to spoil away from Cameron, but it drops into the path of Elliott. Hooks his kick back to the hot spot. Walsh is there. In defensive 50 for Carlton. Collects on the bounce. Nice usage. Hits up Martin, who marks it right half back for Carlton. Got Carlton going with a goal after the quarter time siren. Which was their first of the match. Sends it wide to Williamson who marks it right half back. Collingwood by 10 points. Time ticking down to half time. Williamson onto his left and drives a long ball around the wing. Mackay in the pack. Silvani as well. Maynard sport it down. Pendlebury front and centre. Got a hand pass to early. Knocked it onto the goalie. The one-two with Grundy as the siren sounds for half time. So Carlton finished with the last two goals of the half. The margin got out by... As much as 24 points following Oliver Henry with his third goal, but the Blues closed it late in the half to make it a 10-point ball game at the main break. Collingwood 6-4-40 to Carlton 4-6-30. For the Pies, three goals to Henry. Kicked his first goal in the opening term, first goal in AFL footy. He's now got three next to his name. Individual goals to Elliott, to Hoskin Elliott. And uh, Majacek, meanwhile for the Blues, their goals have come through. Silvani, Stocker, Betts and Martin. Halftime at the MCG, Collingwood leading by 10 points. The thoughts of Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio with you on ABC Sport. Well, I think it's nice to see the Blues come back into it. As you called for, Ramo, it was their ability to put a little bit more pressure on uh, Collingwood, not let them have their way. If they could be a little bit more functional going forward, they certainly would be well and truly in this game. They're just... It's probably squandered quite a few opportunities going inside. Haven't quite had, you know, the, the, co the connection hasn't been as, as nice as they'd like it. But that's okay. They're uh, they're still fighting and scrapping away just through sheer pressure. It's a very simple game, isn't it, Rama? When you get your your chance, put a pressure on the footy. You know, win your one v ones if you get your opportunity. But I think for Collingwood, they've you know, apart from uh, Henry, who's bobbed up, and we spoke about how Jamie Elliott was his ability to to get some separation. They just weren't quite getting the free-flowing footy they were in that first quarter, Collingwood, and that's what's you know, brought Colling Carlton back into it. So if they can get that back up and going, you know, we're looking at their kicking efficiency at the moment. Carlton kicking at 70% to, to Collingwood's 74. So both of them have lifted their rating a little bit, but I think Carlton have been uh, more efficient in that quarter going forward. Well, you look at the game as a whole right now, and we spoke about... About halfway through that, that second quarter where the Blues matchups going going forward, my check was on top of Wiedering. Elliot was on top of, uh, of, Plow of, of Plowman. The game then starts to change when Carlton start to apply more pressure. Collingwood, since Robert Harvey's taken over, they're the number one team for playing on from Mark. So they're going to give you a chance. Yep. They're going to play on, and it might, it might be a risky play on. So Carlton's defenders, if they're set up well enough, they sh they'll get opportunities to intercept. Yep. Once they intercept, if they can then move the ball forward, Carlton's big problem at right at the minute is going forward. Harry McCoy is nowhere near it at the moment. So that quarter he's had wow. he's had one kick, didn't have a mark. So so Roughhead is all over him. So what Harry has to sit in in the rooms at halftime thinking, okay, what's the most dangerous position I could get into to make Roughhead the most uncomfortable? Yep. No doubt McCoy is more talented than Roughhead, but right at the moment. Harry's just simply not getting into the right spot to have any influence. Like, you look at that, the last goal for Eddie Betts. He's running in as a crummer. That's 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 disastrous, really. That's your key forward. Your key forward should be crashing through through those packs. The other part where Carlton were able to improve late in that, that second goal, they slowed to going down. He only had four disposals that quarter. Yep. So he couldn't get that influence that he had um, uh, in, that, in that first quarter. Walsh has been terrific. He's had, uh, he had nine that quarter. 19 for the game. He's had 19 for the game. He's going to need some help. Kennedy's had 16, Kerno 11, Stocker 11, Martin 10. I was really pleased with Paddy Dow's yeah. first quarter. He had nine in the first quarter, all handballs. Yeah. He had only one. So mm. I feel like he got rotated out of that midfield and spent more time as a half forward, which we know how difficult can be. But I think his, his ability to come in when Cripps was out was actually really good in that first quarter. So I think the Carl's midfielder on top here. You look over at the other side, Collingwood Noble has had 14. Playing mainly as, a, mainly as a defender. Degoe, forward mid. 
Chris Main, defender. Grundy, the Ruckman. Maynard as a defender. Rusco as a winger. Yep. So Carlton are on top through the middle of the ground. Yep. It's now how they can create more opportunities, more more quick opportunities. I think somebody has got to go to Walsh in this second half. Lock him down. Who is it? Lock him down. I... Good question. He's had 19 for the game. He's only had the one clearance, four tackles and one inside 50, though. So not yeah. Yeah. as effective in front of the, the, the attacking half of the ground as you'd expect him to be. He's had side bottom stand with him at some stoppages without, yeah, not that that lasts no. long but at all. But they actually need to actually, they need to lock it down. So the subs just come on in Polter. Can, could it be him? I know he's a young player. It'd be a great experience for a young player. He's got a good tank. He plays He plays on a wing. He can run. Is it him? Like they don't have a natural guy to no. as a run-with player. Um, so, it's yeah, that's probably the reason why they're not doing it at the moment. But right at the minute, Walsh doesn't get slower as the game progresses. He gets better. <laughs> His second halves have been he's electric. He's incredible, isn't he? So, if it, if it goes the way it is right now, he'll have 40-plus. Yeah. And he'll have, there'll be, he'll have a massive um, uh, influence on the game because what will happen is as the game gets slower in the second half, he starts to just get that little bit more more space. He's able to execute. Yeah. So you got to you got to becomes more damaging. More you've got to look at that. You've got to shut him down. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not sure. I just don't know who that person yeah. is. There's, it, no, a, there's not an obvious one there. No. It's, a, it's a great learning curve for someone like a Caleb Poulter to yeah. go and have to run around, but also get his taste of mixing it up on the inside yeah. as well. But. You know, that's a big role for a, for a young kid, although he's coming in the freshest, isn't he? Because he spent the first quarter and a half yep. uh, on the pine. So I'm not sure who it is, but you can see that they're shifting in that midfield. And Pendlebury's not spending as much time yep. in there. Side bottom's not in there as much. But, you know, Geordie Degoe's in there a hell of a lot more. And there's still Taylor Adams. Jack Crisp has spent more time at half back. So, you know, there, there is opportunities in there. we just got to see who it is. But they're in front. So, you know, yep. they're, they're obviously doing some things right and they've capitalised when they've gone forward. But the uh, well, same amount of scoring shots, so it could easily be even. So Collingwood with four of their six goals from Carlton turnovers. A touching moment with Jack Silvani kicking a goal, kissing yeah. his black armband and pointing to the sky in memory of his grandfather, Sergio Silvani, who passed during the week and a, a lovely message on Instagram. And you could see the emotion for yeah. Jack after kicking the goal. Uh, so no doubt a, a significant moment for him in his career and, and playing his part in today's match. And Eddie Betts may be lucky to be paid a mark, <laughs> kick the goal, kept Carlton in close proximity, but uh, maybe a little bit lucky on that well, one. Lucky to be paid the mark, lucky not to be called play on. So <laughs> Trying to the, kick it over and claim the mark no. or being paid the but mark. It's a goal. It's in the book now. It sure is. Halftime, Collingwood leading by 10 points at the MCG. Earlier it was Essendon prevailing by 18 points over North Melbourne after the Roos led by 10 points at halftime. Essendon yeah, winning 13 14 92 to North Melbourne, 11 8 74. So the Bombers are inside the top eight. Next match coming up, Adelaide taking on West Coast in around uh, eight minutes' time. Josh Kennedy is out of that match. Bailey Williams comes in. in the final match of the round, the Giants taking on the Sydney Swans. We'll take you there at the completion of this game at the MCG. But for the moment, let's get the latest from the ABC Newsroom. <laughs> ABC News with Satyam Weinstein. Authorities in New South Wales are defending their new COVID lockdown rules with 105 new locally acquired cases in the 24 hours to 8pm last night. Chantal al Curry reports. 76 of the new infections are in Sydney's southwest, where residents of Fairfield, Canterbury, Bankstown and Liverpool can't leave their local area for work except for emergency services and health workers. Of the new cases, at least 27 people were in the community while infectious. The source of 39 infections remain under investigation. A woman in her 90s with the virus from Sydney's southeast died yesterday. There are 76 COVID patients in hospital, including 18 in intensive care and seven on ventilators. Just over 66,000 people were tested in the latest reporting period. Today's figures bring the total number of cases since the current outbreak began to 1,242. The New South Wales Police Minister says there's still a small, noisy minority flouting the public health orders. Three removalists who allegedly knew they had COVID when they travelled from Sydney to Malong in the Central West have been given a court attendance notice. They'll face a maximum penalty of $11,000 fines or six months in jail. Police Minister David Elliott says people should understand the rules. 
The Dope of the Day award goes to the seven people in West Guildford who went out to play soccer yesterday in direct contradiction to the health orders and didn't even have a soccer ball. So if people want to push the envelope, they will join the 240 people who in the last 24 hours were given $1,000 tickets. Victoria's Chief Health Officer says he's concerned about community transmission of COVID-19 at recent sporting events in Melbourne. Two of the 16 new locally acquired cases reported today were cases who attended the Wallabies versus France rugby match at Amy Park on Tuesday. There's also a new case which has emerged at Mildura in Victoria's northwest involving a man who attended the Geelong Carlton AFL match at the MCG which has now six confirmed cases linked to it. Authorities are also keeping a close eye on the Euro finals event at the Crafty Squire in the Melbourne CBD on Monday where a positive case attended. Professor Brent Sutton says more than 400 people were at the venue. We are concerned about the Craft Squire event. There will have been people there for a prolonged period of time. Uh, If they were eating and drinking, then masks will have been off. I'm sure there will have been uh, shouting or uh, for the the English crying. uh, So risk of transmission by virtue of that. Meanwhile, the head of a regional hospital in northwest Victoria says six staff members are isolating after that positive case of COVID-19 was detected in the community. The man presented to the emergency department at Mildura Base Hospital last night with symptoms and later tested positive. Exposure sites are yet to be confirmed. Chief Executive of the hospital, Terry Welch, says he's now bracing for more COVID cases to emerge in the regional city. I think that's a reality. There's no question that we have to be well and truly prepared for, you know, a higher number of potential cases or, or, or confirmed cases. And obviously the key to that is to get tested. The message has been 18 months long now, get tested. The WA Premier Mark McGowan has announced a cargo ship carrying crew members with suspected COVID-19 is set to arrive off the coast of Fremantle this morning. There are 14 crew members aboard the BBC California with seven of them displaying COVID-19-like symptoms. The ship's captains requested the ill crew members be medically assessed when the vessel berths at Fremantle Harbour either today or tomorrow. Mr McGowan says strict health protocols will be followed to ensure there's no risk to the community. We are assuming COVID-19 is on board this ship, so every precaution will be taken. We cannot allow for any risk of the virus entering Western Australia through international shipping. It would be dangerous to the health of all West Australians. Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt is condemning a notorious far-right figure who's posted videos bragging about flouting hotel quarantine rules in Sydney. British commentator Katie Hopkins has boasted on social media about deliberately trying to scare quarantine workers. She was allowed into Australia to appear on Channel 7's reality TV show Big Brother. Health Minister Greg Hunt says Border Force is reviewing her visa. We know that at the moment uh, the UK has the highest reported daily case numbers in the world. And so this is a particularly dangerous and irresponsible action. You're up to date with the latest from ABC News. Enjoying the footy? There's plenty more to discover. Catch up on all the best interviews and action from the weekend's coverage with the best of Grandstand podcasts. Visit ABC Sport Online wherever you get your favourite podcasts and the ABC Listen app. Australia, you talked and we broke it down and now it's time to rip it to shreds. Comedian Nikki Britton and more of our funniest, sharpest minds are tackling some of the burning questions from the groundbreaking Australia Talks project. Do younger Aussies have it harder these days? Everybody has it harder these days. Should social media be banned? E.T. on phone too much. Australia debates. Let's argue. Stream all three now on ABC iView. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Player ran in with dead end. Great tackle, Jack Martin. And the Blues win it back on half forward. Would he slow to be returned to him? Now it is. Hand pass to Stocker. Running start from 50. He's put it through. By check marks. Hand pass to Crisp. Slick movement from Collingwood to half forward. And Hoskin Elliott marks. Short kick. He straightens up. And guess who? Ollie Henry marks 20 out directly in front. The 18 year old skips in. He is having a day. That's his third. Nick Newman has it. Just 10 strides in from the boundary outside 50. Scott Eddie Betts free in the pocket if he can get it to him. Rough head playing in front of him. 
Puts it along towards the goal mount. Silvani's there. He's outnumbered, but he's rising high and stood his ground to take an impressive mark. Jack Silvani following the passing. The Carlton legend surge during the week. He comes in directly in front, 25 metres out, and keeps the family legacy carrying on. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Halftime at the MCG, Collingwood leading Carlton by 10 points, 6-4-40 to the Blues, 4-6-30. Oliver Henry has been the star for Collingwood with three goals in just his fifth match as the Magpies got out by as much as 24 points during that third quarter before two goals late to the Blues closed it to a 10-point advantage at halftime. Matt Clinch alongside Corbin Middlemass, Adam Ramanaskas and Brett Delidio, your experts, Mitch Cleary is down on the boundary. Some of your correspondence on 0437 774 774. Is Collingwood likely to keep Robert Harvey on as a contracted coach? Well, I guess they could as an assistant coach. Do you think you will? Um, normally when the new guy comes in, they have their own people, but yep. David Teague, I guess, carried yep, on with Marker. some of the assistant coaches in which um, Brendan Bolton had. Mm. Ram was enjoying some halftime food, could, so I'll read through a few others. Just to quickly, Clench, you mentioned yes. the boys touched on this too about the numbers and how they've improved under Robert Harvey. So from defensive 50 to inside 50 transition, so from one end of the ground to the other, they've gone from last in the competition to third when you look at the sample size under Harvey. They've gone from defensive 50 to a score from 18th in the competition to first. So they've gone from the worst team to the best team under Robert Harvey in that category. They've made similar jumps in you know, overall categories like disposals and handballs. They're using the ball a lot more by hand. They're playing on a lot more. They're taking a lot more marks. So um, he has been able to get a bounce from them in some of those key categories, even in a, a short, a small sample size. Uh, and they were, they were obvious areas of improvement. Mm-hmm. So it's simply, you know, he might not have got the bounce in those areas in the first week, but then he would have he would have highlighted them through um, through the video review during the week and said, okay, here's what we like. Here's what we really like. Here's what we want to see you do. And and as that's continued over the last couple of weeks, yeah, they're, they've been really good in that area. It's um, I, I think it's something that the, their supporters have been screaming out for. They're, Release the handbrake a little bit, you reckon? Well, they're, they were notorious for just trying to own the ball and go slow and... Hard to watch, wasn't it? Oh, it was, very, it was really hard to watch. Now... When you don't have the personnel to do that, and I think West Coast are finding that out at the moment there, you know, through the back half of the ground there, they're horribly slow at the moment. Yep, yep. They're very easy, very easy to, uh, to defend. So when you take the risk and, you know, you, you will turn it over. There's yep. no doubt you'll turn it over. But I'll tell you what, late in games when you take the risk, you usually get the reward. Yep. I think encouraging guys to continue to turn up for that handball receive, that's far more exciting, a more exciting brand to play. And I think that's where you see... You know, especially with younger teams, I think you start to see that. I think when I've seen Essendon really play that exciting brand this year, Collingwood are starting to do it. But the, 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 the interesting part about that, Lids, right, is these guys are drafted because they're all super talented. And when they're playing, they're all attacking. Most of them are attacking oh, type yeah. players, aren't don't, they? You so, don't draft attackers no, usually. No. <laughs> you know, a lockdown defender, yeah, you get a couple of those. But other than that, they're, most of these guys are ball winners or ball getters. Yep. So they're, they're running and, and carrying and, and using their talent. Sometimes when you – and at times – this happens at a lot of clubs. It can be overcoached. Teams can be overcoached. And what happens, particularly with the younger t- side, when you're overcoached, players go out on the ground and they take it too far. Yep. Too far. So, oh, I've taken a mark. I, I see someone run a pass, but the coach said we've just got to slow it down. So I won't give that handball. And see a bit of that challenge with Adelaide at the Correct. moment, can't you? Absolutely. You get like the last week against Essendon, they took that to the nth degree mm, of, yeah. oh, we want to try to slow Essendon down, so oh, we're yeah. going to be really, really slow. That was paralysis by analysis, Correct. wasn't it? Like, just <laughs> Absolutely. Way too Absolutely. much. Um, so way that, too much scouting. So that's yeah. why I love now what Robert Harvey is doing. He's got, okay, guys, you know what? Just give it. If we make a mistake, so be it. I'll, yeah. I'll live with it. I'll live with that. But Going back to my original point, these guys being drafted, and Carlton's the same. They're, so, they're talented players. They're ball winners, ball getters, run, receive. Let them do that. Let them do that. If they make constant mistakes, well, you've got to pull, pull the handbrake on the individual. But you don't pull the handbrake on the team. I think he's also got a bit of a free hit, though, let's be honest, because yeah. he is the caretaker. Correct. He's yeah. not he's not in charge or contracted for a long period where he's trying to get sustained yeah. success. So you have got that free reign just to be like, you know what, boys, just go. 
and we'll see what comes of it because it is more enjoyable. You get the boys on side. There's no doubt about that. But I think we saw that with Reece Shaw almost a little bit at North Melbourne yeah. when he took over yeah. for that last half of the year. So... Well, that's how uh, David Teague got the job with the, the Teague train turning around Carlton's fate after Brendan Bolton left the club. In the NRL this afternoon, round 18, Penrith Panthers have defeated the Warriors 30 points to 16. In the match taking place at the moment, it's the Brisbane Broncos leading 12 points to 10 against the West Tigers. Half an hour gone there. And the final match of the weekend, the South Sydney Rabbitohs taking on the Canterbury Bulldogs. I'm sure Ram is up to the early hours of the night and the early hours of the morning watching the British Open where yeah. South African Louis Oosthuizen will be out to take... What was that name again? Louis Oosthuizen. Okay. Well, Better on the uh, second uh, yeah. take, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're always good for keeping me honest there. Uh, he's had a, a series of runner-up finishes, but a chance to claim a major with the British Open in the late hours of tonight and the early hours of tomorrow morning. Uh, Mitch Cleary is with us on the boundary. Uh, Mitch, um, we've got a message coming through from Paul in Astonville in New South Wales wondering about Charlie Curno. So just repeat his feet in the VFL. And do we have any idea as to what round 19 might look like next week? Yeah, the first game back for Charlie Kerno more than two years at any level clinchy. Three quarters in a scratch. That's this morning involving Collingwood, Carlton and Hawthorne. And the fixtures for next week. Looks like three games from round 20 might get moved forward. That is Western Bulldogs, Melbourne, Hawthorne and Adelaide and Gold Coast and Brisbane, that Q clash. So three games from round 20 likely to get moved forward into next week. Wow. So that's... Um Big developments going on with the fixture upheaval. More on that throughout the afternoon. We're away in the third term and Pendlebury's breaking out of the middle but kicks to Saad who takes the intercept mark at centre half back. He goes back and across to Wiedering, peeling off the back flank. Hits up Ollies who takes the mark, still in the defensive half for Carlton. Very rare. That's the second time now Pendlebury's had space and time. He just completely missed the target going inside forward 50 in this game. Pies by 10 points. Always kick finds Martin, who marks, plays oh. on, overcooks the kick. Wanted Cottrell at centre half forward, finds Main standing five metres behind him, and Chris Main has it centre half back for Collingwood. Pies led it by 24 points. Time on in the second term. They now lead by 10. Possession number 14 for Chris Main as he goes short to Rusco. And out to Will Hoskinelli, who takes the mark at right half back. Collingwood leading by 10 points after the Blues finished that opening half with the last two goals. Majet working up the southern wing, takes the mark, inboarded to Goey, wants to move it quickly to Elliott. One on one with Jones, great mark. It's a great mark. He has Henry free in the pocket, thought about giving it off. He'll now go back and take his set shot on goal and deserves to after that mark. Jeez, he's got good bounce, yeah. hasn't he? <laughs> he needs to take the body there, Jones. In that marking contest, smaller opponent in Elliott. Take his body, body spoil, and he doesn't mark. His ability to go straight up. Yeah. He's as good as anyone in sticky mitts for a bloke of his size. He's 178 centimetres, so plays like a bigger forward than he is. Great on the lead. Good around the ball with good speed. Can he finish here from 48 metres out? He's out to the right, and he misses a minor score. Collingwood by 11 points, two minutes gone, third turn. Is that your old teammate, David Roden, as the goal umpire? Yeah, it is. I love his theatrics. Oh, I'm waiting. I've asked him to do the uh, the worm. <laughs> <laughs> Grand final day. <laughs> Here's Williams to take the kick out. He comes wide with the kick to Kennedy. A couple of corkies in the first half, including a knee in the back and one straight in the quad. Zach Williams, he's okay, though, to start the second half. Kennedy with the mark at half back, and now the long contest kick down the line for Carlton. Mackay working his way to the front. Roughhead spoils it away from him. Degoe at the drop. Hand pass picked off by Walsh. Degoe pins the arm in the tackle, takes Walsh to ground, and a ball up on the wing. And Walsh drilled hard into the turf, but he's straight back up. 19 possessions for Sam Walsh, the 21 year old leading possession getter on the ground. De Koning wins down the tap, got it to Nunes, bumped as he got his kick towards Harry Mackay. He was held in the marking contest. He'll take the free kick at right half forward. Just had the one disposal in the second quarter. Big H. He's outside 50, veering out to the left. Looks to put it towards the top of the goal square. Are the flyers for the Blues? Cottrell with a shove. Charging through Williamson. Couldn't gather the footy. A chance for Collingwood. Poulter couldn't get boot to pull. Martin's tackle. Through it. And Collingwood will take the advantage through Maynard. Kicks towards a one-on-one. Majacek and Wiedering. Over the back it goes. Plowman oh. comes in to offer support. Got Majacek high. And it's a sloppy mistake, really, given Carlton at the numbers. Collingwood on half back. Majacek wants to move it, and good reason. Finds Bianco, who takes the mark in front of the interchange. Plowman back, though, to stand the mark. 
Now Bianco just has to send it down to half forward. Not a great kick. And Jones comes charging up to take the mark. And Ollie Henry turns around and says, what was that kick about? And Jones with the footy half back for Carlton. Bangs it back down the wing in front of the bench. Maynard spoils out wide, wants the safety of the boundary line. Bianco in the end decides to keep it alive. Outnumbering Nunes, hands it to Noble, kicks to half forward. Jones inadvertently may have socketed out on the full. No. Hit the deck before going out. A throw in, 60 out from Collingwood's goal. Kick it to the punt road end. In this third quarter. Uh, Collingwood lead by 11 points, by the way. 6-5 over Carlton, 4-6. We haven't had a goal yet four and a half minutes into this third quarter. Earlier Essendon winners by 18 points in the match between West Coast and Adelaide getting underway. Keep you across that this afternoon. Ball just came clear as Kennedy laid the tackle on Adams. Tao got the kick away, but the umpire had blown his whistle. So a ball up. Just short of left out forward for the Magpies, who lead by 11 points. Collingwood getting their first victory under Robert Harvey last week with a seven-goal final term against the Tigers. And they carry on that momentum this afternoon. De Koning wins down the tap towards the boundary line. Grundy's after it. Good tackle from Kennedy. Pinned the arm. And Grundy couldn't get a hand pass away. The Blues taking it right half back through Matt Kennedy. So Kennedy possession 18 here for him. Tries to pinpoint his pass to Mackay. Again, he's underneath the footy. Kick travels to Roughhead. Picks up the half volley. Hand pass back down the wing. Walsh is there. Hand pass finds Silvani through traffic. Links up with Paddy Dow. Faints around um, Noble, then floats. He's kicked a right half forward. Oh, he's the target. Spoil comes from Rasko. Side bottom collects. Oh, he's up and tackles side bottom. Oh, holding the ball and a free kick for Matt Owies. Oh, Competed yep. the first time in the contest, butted up with a second effort and wins the free. Sidebottom will say he kicked that ball, but I think it may have rolled down from his knee where he's made contact. So that's where Sidebottom will be compl complaining. But great tackle by Owies. We don't have a problem with that being paid, no, do we? No, absolutely not. Should have been paid not. about yeah. seconds earlier. Yeah. It's a great tackle. No, that's, that's holding the ball every day of the week. He's having a great year, Matt Owies. Former basketball or a guard out of the University of Hawaii. Cat B recruit. Now making it as a small forward in the AFL as he kicks right to the behind line. And Mackay competing on the line. It's through for a behind. That'd be tough, wouldn't it? University of Hawaii. Oh, shocking. What an cool. experience. 4-7 uh, Carlton. 6-5 Collingwood. Back to 10 points as it was at the half. Collingwood lead at six played third quarter. Now playing for the Navy Blues. Living the dream. <laughs> Log on straight. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Main brings Collingwood back into play to rough it up to the wing. Good mark taken by Henry. Isn't his confidence growing as the game continues? Three goals already for Collingwood's number one draft pick. Comes in board to Main and then short to Dugowie. Just outside the defensive 50 in the middle of the ground to Bianco. Betts couldn't get there late. Bianco looks straight down the pipe. Kick for Cameron turned over. And Newman takes the intercepting mark for the Blues. Short to Walsh. Possession number 21 coming up. Fisher offers a lead, kicks to him at half forward in from the side. Maynard has been paid to mark Fisher. Has it at the edge of the centre square with Carlton looking to go into attack at the city end. A lot of the play has been Carlton in this early uh, early part of the third quarter. Need to convert, need to get some scoring options now. Fisher drives his kick to the hot spot. Big climb from Petrevsky Seaton. Can't mark. Follows up at ground level. Here's Martin. Hand pass ends up with Noble. Noble hands it off to Rusko. He kicks wide to Bianco, who marks at half back. Trent Bianco with it for Collingwood. There's nothing really up ahead. He's told to go now, so just has to kick along down the line. They come from all directions. Deconian had a touch on it. Spills to Stocker. Hand pass to Fisher. Long kick back inside 50. Mackay down there. Crisp rises. Can't mark. Spills to Bianco. Collingwood mop it up. Rusko to Quainall by hand. And now back to Maine. He chips it to Goey inside the defensive 50. Now to the run of Quainall. Over the top to Henry at half back. Fluency loss as he turns it over to Nunes with a hand pass. He's up and under kick straight to Pendlebury. He juggled a good mark off balance at half back. Sports Cameron free in the middle of the MCG. He plays on. They've got numbers of plenty. Elliott out the back, takes them up. Hand pass to side bottom, runs into the vacant goal mouth. Two bounces into the goal square and puts it through. A defensive lapse from the Blues. Elliott all on his own inside the forward 50. He's able to give it off to side bottom. And all of a sudden, Collingwood are back out to a 16 point advantage. 7 5 47 to the Blues, 4 7 
31, Steel Sawbottom with just eight, his eighth disposal of the match at the eight-minute mark of the third well, turn. It's always the case, Lids. If you don't take your avenues to goal when you're dominating play, the ball turns over, goes up the other end, one inside forward 50 goal. Really, really easy. So that's on Carlton because they continue to kick to the same pocket straight up and down the line where Collingwood's tall defenders, Maynard, Roughhead, Madgen, just stood there and spoiled the ball. Yep. Ball goes the other side of the ground. Collingwood run it down, untouched, easy goal in the end. Just seeing who traded up. Liam Jones trades up to go to Cameron, doesn't impact the play, just leaves Elliott sitting all by himself out the back. You're probably better off just to sit back, aren't you, and allow Cameron to make that decision. Side bottom with the goal. Collingwood by 16 points. Back in the middle. Pendlebury hooks a kick around the body. Start out to meet it. Wax it to the wing. Here's Cottrell onto it for Carlton. Kicks in hope down to half forward. Bouncing footy collected by Main. Goes to ground. Close to the boundary line. Main and Fisher take it out. And a throw in 70 out from Carlton's goal. It's repeating the news. Three games from the round 20 fixture have been brought forward to round 19. So... We'll have three games next week we didn't anticipate. Brisbane and Gold Coast, Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs, a blockbuster clash, and Adelaide Hawthorne all slated for next weekend. From the throw-in, Grundy one down the tap to uh, Pendlebury, couldn't get a clean hand pass away. Still scrapping for it here, Pendles, as he tackles Walsh. The ball comes spilling out. Kennedy now tackle. Great tackling intent from both sides as Brown locks him up. The umpire will throw it up just short of half forward for the Blues. Collingwood by 16 points. Ten minutes gone, third term. Grundy wins down the tap. Read beautifully by Dow. Just got around Grundy. His kick off the outside of the boot will bounce out of play right on 50. And the city end for the Blues heading into attack. No goal scored at the Adelaide over. West Coast leading by a point. Two behinds to one behind there. Through nine minutes. We'll keep you across that game this afternoon. The final match of the round, the battle between Sydney and GWS to close out round 18 of footy. Grundy wins the tap, but he's opposing Reichman Silvani. Soccer's it forward. Crisp close to the boundary line. His hand pass ends up out of play. 40 out from Carlton's goal. Earlier, Josh Thomas, the friendly fire, clashed heads with his own teammate Darcy Cameron in a marking contest, and head clash resulted in him being subbed out of the game. So Caleb Poulter end in Lockie Fogarty, the sub for Carlton, unused so far. The boundary throw in. Brett Rosebury spotted a free kick for a hold. And it's going to go Dow's way. Had his jumper tugged before he grabbed the footy. So Paddy Dow to take it. And the man on the mark, 49 metres out from the Carlton goal. Dow's going to shift it laterally to Wiedering. He marks 70 out right half forward. Harry Mackay off the ground, just having his foot looked at. So there's no big marking target deep. He hits up Eddie Betts. Great kick from Wiedering. And bets out to meet it in the only leading lane in the forward 50. And he takes the mark, 45 from home. He's not no, comfortable no, at all with the trip, is he? He is. He's just unselfish. He's, well, he's making out like he's going to handball. He's not going to handball, right? <laughs> he looked to hand pass twice, and now he's going to take the kick. Right on the channel at right half forward. Passes short to Kennedy. It's swatted away. No mark. Loose ball forward 50. Hurried kick forward from Fisher. He misses with the off-balance snap. And a minor score for Carlton. So Collingwood's lead cut to 15 points. 12 played third quarter. Oh, well, Main quickly in. Kicked to Maynard. His kick was smothered by Betts. Collingwood under pressure. Main tackled by Fisher. Dribbles a kick towards goal. It misses to the right. Good reflex reaction but couldn't steer it straight. So last two behinds the Blues way. Collingwood's lead is 14 points. Up to the wing as Collingwood work it through. Uh, Crisp to Quainor and then Poulter takes the mark. And there's some delay getting the footy back to him. And now Poulter back into the slow play through no fault of his own. So he'll take the kick with the bright pink boots on southern wing. Goes wide to Dugowie. Kennedy trying to get across to spoil. Can't get a hand on it. Dugowie marks. His fifth touch for the quarter. 14 point lead for Collingwood. 13 played, third term, short kick. Able to hit up Tay Adams, who takes the mark between wing and half forward. 
puts it deep to the hot spot. They come from all directions. It slips out the back. Cottrell had a fumble. Top of the goal square for the Pies. Grundy collects. Hand pass under pressure. Finds Murphy. Back towards uh, Henry. Hand pass over his shoulder. Eventually gets to Noble. Spins out a one would be tackle. Hand pass back out wide to Brown. Still alive. Elliott gives it to Murphy and his kicks out on the fall. In traffic. So Carlton will get it in the back pocket. Pies by 14 points. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. The Coleman medal leader, Harry Mackay, has come from the ground with a right uh, foot complaint. The boot coming off and, and back on again. A couple of painkillers. He looks to be okay, but a little bit of discomfort. Thanks, Mitch. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Matt Clinch and Coleman Middlemass calling the action. Brett Delidio and Adam Ramanaskis, your experts. And Sam petreski seaton to take the free kick in the right back pocket. He looks to come inboard. Cottrell left it for Plowman, who takes the mark, still inside the defensive 50. Where to for the Blues? He looks to switch play. Plowman in two minds, goes short to Walsh, who marks on the defensive 50. He looks wider still to Wiedering, who can take the mark at left half back. They still haven't quite got a past half back. He kicks up now to Nunes, who takes the mark. Five or six metres inside the boundary on the southern side. Silvani offers a lead, finds him. Now more dash, the hand pass inboard. Stocker with a fumble. Collingwood retake it through Brown. Got the hand pass to Sidebottom. He's kicked the only goal this third term. He directs traffic and kicks it towards Elliott. Weedering in from the side. Elliott spoiled it away. Weedering races after it towards the boundary line. Tumbles over. Now gets to his feet as Elliott lays the tackle. Nunes rips it clear. Poulter over the top of him. And I don't think they're quite out of play, so the umpire will throw it up. Against most other opponents, Wiedering takes that mark. Lids mentioned it earlier. Elliot Chick can go straight up in a marking contest. Just halves the contest, locks it inside their forward 50. Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio, grandstand AFL. It's not a boundary throwing, it's a ball up. So that caught everyone by surprise as the Ruckman were waiting for the ump to spin it in. It spills down towards Walsh, who can clear it from congestion up towards the southern wing. No mark off a series of hands, spills to side bottom. High half forward for the Magpies, gives it to Murphy, kicks inside 50. Plowman spills the chest mark, Stocker under pressure. Hand pass to Wiedering, hurried kick out of the defensive 50, but Madgen takes the intercept mark. Here's Jack Madgen. His sister Tess, part of the Opals squad for the upcoming Olympics. The kick inside 50, superb. Puts it in the air to the advantage of Cameron. Those big long limbs, he reaches above his head and takes the mark in a pack of five or six. And Darcy Cameron can shoot from 25 out just right of centre. You always look to see the look on the backman's face when that's gone. <laughs> Poor old Liam Jones looks like he just sucked the lemon. He was uh, very <laughs> sour with that one. He's like, surely he was hand in the back. Well, where's the support? It was just good body work from Cameron. You know, when the ball's coming in nice and uh, deep like that, gives him an opportunity. He just needs to finish his work. So Darcy Cameron, he skips in virtually straight in front on his 26th birthday. He's got a goal to cap it off. The Magpies out by 20 points. 16 played in the third term. Collingwood 8 5 53. Carlton 4 9 33. Grandstand AFL. Well, they're just taking their opportunities now. That's repeat inside uh, 50 entries there by the Pies. And it go, you go back to where Weedering should have taken the intercept. Mark Elliott's able just to get in there, spoil the ball, lock the ball in. Ball goes back out. It's a flat kick. It's a nice flat kick. A, a flat kick allows. At least your forwards to some sort of run onto it. Cameron's just too tall in the end there. Just put the put the big arms up. A little bit of body there on Liam Jones. It takes a really strong mark. Adam Ramanaskis with you on ABC Sport. Still no goal with the Adelaide Oval. It's the West Coast Eagles three behind, so Adelaide two. 22 minutes gone in the opening term there. And a cheerio to Archie, who's six and practising his handballing in the garage. Well, his mum, Karen, is listening to ABC Sport. Good work, Archie. Send us in a photo with... So many kids in lockdown. I'm sure any opportunity to entertain Kennedy bursts from the middle of the ground for the Blues. He might go all the way. Great finish. Eddie Betts shepherding on the goal line. And Matt Kennedy with a long-range bomb. Didn't Carlton need that? As Collingwood had got out by 20 points, they close it back to a 14-point margin. The Pies 8-5-53 to Carlton. 
Five nine thirty nine. 39 17 minutes gone third term. You're right, Clinchy. Didn't Carlton need that? I was just trying to think. When was the last time you saw a centre bounce goal like uh, that? Remember yeah. where someone's bouncing out? I know it, it took for an advantage to be played on. You know, usually teams are set up very well defensively, so it probably caught them off guard a little bit. But that's what Patrick Cripps used to do. It mm. used to be one of the best things in footy watching you know guys like Chris Jard and Burst. you know Axel Foley guy that I played with used yeah. to do it regularly coming out of the centre of the ground kicking goals but it's gone out of the game a little bit but nice from Matt Kennedy next teammate of mine up at the Giants really uh, coming into a good game at the moment without Paddy Cripps in the team playing very well. How far out do you reckon he was Rama? Oh that was good 60 easily 14 point margin again Collingwood's way third term action Grundy palms it down Pendlebury as it held to him by Kennedy, so we'll do it all again. 14-point lead for the Pies. A foot complaint for Harry Mackay. We'll get Mitch to keep you updated. It looks like he's back out on the ground as a kick goes forward for the Magpies. And Pendlebury on the end of it, and again another pack forms. Grundy lays a heavy tackle on Williams, who's had a rough day. The ball up inside the centre square. Mitch Cleary. He is back on the ground, Corbin. He is hobbling a little bit. Not 100%, but he's going to continue Harry Mackay. His goal is today, the Coleman medal leader. As Carlton get a hurried clearance from the stoppage, Cottrell kicks down the wing. Silvani and Crisp compete for it. Crisp wins it for the Magpies, the 1 2 with Madgen. Now a hand pass to Rusco. Centre half back, kicks in the middle of the ground for Henry. He kicked three goals in the first half, Ollie Henry. He looks out the right half forward. A one on one, Jones into Gully. Jones a hand on it, a free kick. The non controlling umpire. I've seen this a lot this weekend. And Jones is going to get the free for a push against Gully. He's appealing to the umpire in the zone and I'm sure that umpire would just say mate I didn't buy it, it came from <laughs> somewhere else Jones goes with a laser pass Said Kerno picks it up on the bounce into the middle of the ground, drives a long kick towards Kennedy, dragged out of it by Adams, Cottrell flew, couldn't take the mark, hand pass to Silvani, nice side step around Main, got it to Betts, the hand pass to Walsh, cornered in got his way around, Poulter squares it up to Dow, he's 50 metres out though, wants to give it off oh. trying to find to Koning Jack Crisp got hands to it for Collingwood. Got it to side bottom. Turns it over. Zach Williams, who's been quiet after some early bumps, 50. but he's going to get a 50 here. Just crept the mark, I think, there. It's, it was, Henry. it's Henry, yeah. Oh, he's unlucky, Lids. He went over it deliberately, though, unfortunately. Trying to just stop Carlton's attack, and just a step or two is what the umpire was all on to. Oh, Jesus, close, Clinchy. <laughs> That's one step. He'll never do that again for no, the rest of his career no, now, will he? No. So Zach Williams is now taken to pretty much 25 metres out directly in front. Carlton kicked the last goal of the match. Williams has had a couple of awkward landings earlier in the match, so he has his composure in front of goal. The boom recruit for the Blues in the off-season. Spinning the footy as he starts his approach. Zach Williams comes in and finishes the deed. Carlton players come to celebrate inside the attacking 50 as they close the margin back to eight points, Collingwood's way. The Pies 8 5 53 to Carlton 6 uh, Carlton 6 9 45. 21 minutes gone, third term on ABC Sport. It is one of the more horrible feelings in football where you give away a 50, you go all the way inside for Woodford, and then obviously your man kicks, kicks a goal. It's There's nowhere to hide there because you're standing on the mark and you know the camera's going to be on you. It's, trying to get a reaction uh, from you. But, oh, look, he, he's unlucky. He crept the mark by by a step or two. It was well set up there by, by the Blues. It just this the last little period of time there, last last three or four minutes, are just starting to get a little bit of that momentum. I, I was thinking that they start to look at Liam Jones going forward just to, just as another option, but they probably persist now. Eight points, they're winning this, uh, this quarter. The margin was 10 at halftime, so they're winning this quarter now by two points. Eight points, the margin on the scoreboard. Collingwood's way. Time on in the third. Jeez, some friendly fire again as Elliot clips Adams on the way through. Umpire, of course, lets them roll as Dow comes charging over the top of the pack. Hands it away to Kennedy. He's wrestled to the ground and a ball up. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. First sign of light showers for the afternoon. Uh, just starting to come down. A few people down here. The uh, Only a handful in the crowd <laughs> putting, their, uh, putting their hoods on. Might be able to find a seat undercover as well, Mitch, if it gets uh, a little wet. We're going to have another stoppage in the middle. Carlton players want a free kick. They're going to get it. It's a holding the ball call, though, going against them. 
Kennedy on the bottom of the pack and Adams to take it and race away. Collingwood get the centre break. Adams kick in the direction of Murphy. Got his hands to it. Can't mark. Spills underneath side bottom and Williams. Another pack. Another ball up. 40 metres out from Collingwood's goal at the punt road end. Pies by eight. Time on in the third. Blues with the last two goals of the match. Umpire throws it up. Free kick. Hold. And it's going Carlton's way. Tom DeConey to take it. A goal finally, the Adelaide oh, Oval. Oh, that's a bad turnover to Koning off a step. Has turned it straight over to Bianco, trying to chip it to Stalker. That's probably on equal with the worst feeling in football. <laughs> <laughs> when you do that. Oh, dear. Oh, saw Stalker free just casually with a step and yeah. just never quite hit the target. And um, Bianco, aware to it, was able to slip in and take the mark. We're all taught that as kids, get your momentum going through your kick. Don't kick off your back foot. Or if you're 200, just kick it long. Correct, or handball. <laughs> So Trent Bianco, who grew up a Collingwood fan, he would have lived to want to play in front of 80,000 of the MCG. He comes in and finishes from the right forward pocket. As the rain starts a bit heavier a bit at the MCG, an important goal after Carlton to kick the last two. The margin back out to a 14-point Collingwood advantage. 9-5-59 to the Blues, 6-9-45. 24 minutes go on third term with Brett Delidio and Adam Ramanaskis on Grandstand AFL. Yeah, disappointing, Rama, when uh, you do the good work, get the free kick, and you be thinking, you'll be stewing over that for the rest of the night, won't you, saying, oh, geez, I was just lazy on that one, late off it, as you said, you've got to get your momentum. Thought it was just a nice, easy chip sideways. But I think, you know, when you're the ruckman, it's either give it off to, I think that's what Sard and Williams are down there for, yeah. get around the big fella. I know he's usually a pretty good kick. I'm not going to say that he's not. But take it out of his hands. Take the decision away, and that's what uh, my old coach would have been saying. They're just don't, don't worry about it, mate. Do your job. Give it off. Get someone else involved. Pies back out by 14 points, and they've always been able just to keep Carlton at bay as they get the break here through Sam Walsh. Turns and kicks to Silvani in a one-on-one. Moved out of the way by Jack Crisp, who takes the mark. And wins the battle. He goes short for Collingwood to side bottom, who marks centre-half back. And he goes short too across the back end of the centre square to Dugowie. Short kicking game. Persist to go. He's short. It's picked off. Saad got himself in there. Wins the footy to make him pay from 50 out on the run. He's missed the whole set. It's out on the fall. Carlton can't capitalise on the turnover. Time on third term. Magpies by 14. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Corbin, you mentioned the case of friendly fire before. Taylor Adams on the receiving end. He's just come from the ground receiving some attention to his neck. Looks to be okay. Thanks, Mitch. Rafed looks to bring Collingwood back into play. Up against the left behind post. Kick to no one, really. And Jack Martin takes an uncontested mark. Everyone was looking for the Collingwood big man, and there wasn't one. Pendlebury didn't fly. So Martin looks to send Carlton into attack once more. Silvani up in the pack. Spoiled away by Ruffin. I think a push out against Silvani. Hands in the middle of the back. He's landed awkwardly, though. He's very slow to rise. Free kick going Jack Crisp's way. Plays on in the right back pocket. Hugs the boundary line with a kick towards Henry. Worked underneath it by Plowman who takes the mark. At left half forward. Quarter time of the Adelaide over. I was trying to say before that turnover. Tex Walker with the only goal. Adelaide leading by three. Plowman plays on and then gives a hand pass to DeConey. Goes out wide to Williamson. Kicks wide as well to Martin. Up against the boundary line. He turns and points at the sticks. He's right yeah. on the junction of the 50 in the boundary at left half forward. We've seen Daisy kick a torp from here and uh, yes. smung one through. I'm not sure whether he's got this in him, but he's rating it. I, I like that he's backed himself anyway. Interesting to see whether he does lay it up. What's your percentage play here, Rami? You reckon lay it up or have a crack? Little throwback to the grand final for Dale Thomas. Oh, no, he's going. He's open. The, he plays on it up, though. and kick. kicks to DeConey, who marks 20 out right in front. Just pulled the kick beautifully. And DeConey able to hug it to his chest. He'll shoot from right in front. So whether that's a set play or not, it's smart by DeConey because rather than being on the goal line where you're just crowded with players, he's away from that. So you wonder if that is a set play that Carlton like to use. So Carlton keep on coming. DeConey moves in. At the left, he's got it. And the Blues have it back to single digits. Through it goes, 7-9-51, Carlton, Collingwood 9-5-59. 28 minutes into the third term, Collingwood's lead back to eight points. Well, well that's the sort of yeah. stuff he can do from outside 50, Jack Martin, isn't it? He 
a silky user of the footy. But he's, uh, it's, it's one way to get it back, isn't it, for young De Koning. He uh, made the mistake and gave away the last goal, but it's always funny how footy works that way. You keep working hard, it repays you, get in the right spots, but it also helps when you've got players who can use it, get, get a hold of the footy, put it on your chest like that, right spot, right time. Clearance is starting to become a real issue for the Pies now. 15 to 28 in Carlton's favour. Uh, we're getting we're getting close to three quarter time. The, the game's gonna it's gonna come in a lot tighter again in this last quarter as fatigue said it sets in. If Carlton are winning this territory battle at the margin, it is gonna be tricky for the Pies in this last quarter. Brody Grundy off the ground as is Taylor Adams at the moment. To Coning went early, landed awkwardly. The Blues almost get it through Walsh, who dribbled it forward to going backwards. Hand pass to Quainor retreats inside the fifty, received it back and kicks out to Noble. He takes the mark at right half back. Turns and kicks in on the 45, finds Rusko. He's playing across half back this afternoon. Back inside the defensive 50 to Madgen. No one on the mark as Eddie Betts now comes late. Looks for Noble at half back. He rises and takes the mark. Despite a late effort from Walsh to try and get there to spoil. Round the boundary line, the kick to Steel side bottom. So three goals apiece in this third quarter. After Collingwood led by 10 points at half time. Sidebottom call to play on. Sides are just loaded up and kick long around the southern wing. Wiedering sets himself underneath it. Madgen up with one arm, trying to tap it to Cameron. It goes out of play. And a boundary throw in. Collingwood by eight points at the MCG. Almost half an hour gone. The Adelaide Oval quarter time. The Crows leading by a goal. Pies have made their sub. Josh Thomas out of the game at head clash with his own teammate and Darcy Cameron. So out of the game in the first half and Caleb Poulter in. Carlton sub unused Lockie Fogarty. So from the boundary throw in, there's been a free kick. Side bottom held without it by Fisher. Takes it quickly out wide. The Noble heads to half forward. Bianco the target. Got a hand on as it skids out of play. And we'll have a... Th oh, thought we are going to have a throw. Maybe out on the full. We are in the boundary throw in. Right half forward here for Collingwood. Right on the line as we get a look at the television replay. Bianco getting the touch before it went out. Boundary throw in, half forward for the Pies. Cameron wins it down. Dow out of the stoppage. Hand pass to Kerno, turns and kicks down the wing. Mackay trying to run back with the flight of the footy, outnumbered. Collingwood win it through Roughhead. Hand pass over his shoulder. Got to Silvani, though, the Blues. He gives it to Walsh, away by hand to Kerno. Back to Walsh. He kicks laterally just before the half time of the three quarter time siren. Collingwood's lead cut to eight. They led by 11 at quarter time, 10 at the half, and now eight points at three quarter time. They did lead the game by as many as 24 points. That was time on in the second quarter. And now through three, the Magpies by eight points over their arch rival. Now the goal kickers, Ollie Henry has three. They all came in the first half. One for Elliott, Bianco, Cameron, side bottom, Hoskett Elliott, and Majacek. While for Carlton, they've got seven individual goal kickers. Silvani, Williams, Kennedy, DeConning, Stocker, Betts, and Jack Martin. Earlier it was Essendon back inside the top eight with an 18-point win over North Melbourne. 13-14-92 to the Roos. 11-8-74. North Melbourne led by 10 at halftime. Jake Stringer with four goals. Peter Wright with three. And Larky with three for North Melbourne. The three votes to Zach Merritt with his 39 disposals for the Bombers. And the early stages of the second quarter, a goal for the West Coast Eagles through Jack Darling. So locks things up at 1-3-9 apiece. Two minutes gone, second term. Josh Kennedy was a late out there for the West Coast Eagles with Bailey Williams coming in. There is an ABC call available for that game. You have to log on to the AFL app if you want to listen to that. While here at the MCG, it's Collingwood leading by eight points. It's all unfolding on Grandstand AFL on ABC Sport and ABC Sport Digital. When history is made. Into the net she goes and Ash Barty has done it. The world number one has conquered Wimbledon for the first time. And she crouches on her haunches. She's crying tears of joy. She can't quite believe it. She said it would be a dream. And it certainly has proved to be. ABC Sport is there. I hope I made everyone proud. No. <laughs> you did. ABC Sport. On radio, online and on the ABC Listen app. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Henry 
Chuck with a good mark off balance at half back. Sports Cameron free in the middle of the MCG. He plays on. They've got numbers of plenty. Elliot out the back takes them up. Hand pass to Cybottom. Runs into the vacant goal mound. Two bounces into the goal square and puts it through. Wiedering hurried kick out of the defensive 50, but Madgen takes the intercept mark. Here's Jack Madgen. The kick inside 50, superb. Puts it in the air to the advantage of Cameron. So Darcy Cameron, he skips in. Virtually straight in front on his 26th birthday, he's got a goal to cap it off. Kennedy bursts from the middle of the ground for the Blues. He might go all the way. Great finish, Eddie Vett shepherding on the goal line. And Matt Kennedy with a long range bomb. Didn't Carlton need that? Williamson kicks wide as well to Martin. Against the boundary line, he turns and points at the sticks. He plays on it up though. and kicks. kicks to De Coney, who marks 20 out right in front. De Coney moves in at the left, he's got it. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Collingwood leading by eight points at three-quarter time against the Blues. 9-5-59 to Carlton 7 9-51. A win today for the Pies. Let's we'll see them jump above the Blues on the AFL ladder. Matt Clinch alongside Corbin Middlemass. Adam Ramanaskis and Brett Delidio are your experts on ABC Sport. Well, there's only eight points in it, Ram. I feel like Collingwood would be relying on a little bit of that wet sail come home and really dominate this last quarter. Carlton have just they haven't really put Collingwood away at all, have they, today? They, they haven't been in front, I don't, I don't feel, for... You know, large parts of the game at all, but really been uh, you know, disappointing to see that the Blues. I understand they're missing their, their skipper, they're one of their best midfielders, but you know, again, Sam Walsh standing up. He's at a 29 already to three quarter time. He'll uh, he'll crack the 40 today. I would have thought Matt Kennedy's been okay for the Blues as well. For the Pies, though, they've sort of become a little bit on. Jordy going over, he's gone, everyone's saying, oh, get him into the midfield, get him into the midfield, but I feel like he's not as damaging this game in particular. He's had, he has had better games, I understand that. But the 10 to 21, only three contested balls, no clearances, which I find very surprising, only three inside 50s. Jordy to go is a much better player when he's centre forward, driving and in there, but for me, I, think, I feel like Collingwood, if they're chasing anyone at the end of the year, it needs to be another big key forward. I know they've got Mason Cox sitting down there. I'm not sure he's the answer. My check, you know, he's, he'll do a power of work for you, but Cameron's not uh, off. He's kicked his one goal in that quarter. I'm not sure that he's the one as well. So that, that's my thoughts for them going forward. If they can get that at, in, a, in a line, then they you know, be a far better team. Well, it'll be interesting to see. So Collingwood have been, the past month, the best four, four, fourth quarter team. So, But yes. they've been chasing teams down. Yep. They've got the lead here. There's three aspects to this game. The first one is the, is the clearance. If Collingwood can break even in clearances this quarter, they'll probably win the game. The other part is the tackling. Collingwood are comfortably leading that 54 to 36. Can Carlton apply enough pressure to Collingwood uh, in this final quarter? And then the last one's efficiency. There's no teams aren't dropping a player back, taking another one yep. up to the midfield. It's very much a one-on-one game today. So who can be more efficient taking the ball forward? That's where the winners. That's where the winner will be will be had. Pies, three games under Robert Harvey as caretaker coach. They've gone five goals, five goals, yeah. seven goals yeah. Ooh, in final quarter. They've been quarters, powerful in the last quarter, but they've been chasing in the last quarter. Yeah. Corb, so it's a little bit different today. Interesting hit outs, 27-21 Collingwood's way, but they're down 17-29. And they're getting the, the smacking in, in the, the clearances. clearances. Yeah. So into the final quarter we go. Collingwood leading by eight points. As the umpire said to bounce to get things underway. Grundy into Coning, to Coning, almost one down the tap, trying to get it to Kennedy. Elliott sharks it for Collingwood, got it to Adams, kicks towards half forward. Williams in front, touched off the boot. Squeeze the kick out towards Williamson, he's pushed over by Noble, played on, got around Walsh, and Petreski Seaton gets it to Rusko, kicks inside the 50, up Wiedering, spoils it away for Carlton. Walsh at half back, dives on the footy. Hoskin Elliott over the top, just got it away at the last moment through Williamson. Got it to Stocker. High kick to the southern wing. Racing back main. Gets good support from Madgen. Keeping Silvani at bay. Feeds the hand pass back to Quainor. To main. Now by hand to Pendlebury. Has time to have a fumble. Uncharacteristic for him. 
to Quainor and then all the way back to Rusco. Almost brought down. Good pressure from Harry Mackay. And now Quainor does see Collingwood out of defence. Kicks back down the southern wing. My check. Strong hands. Marks in front of Ploughman. Defensive side of the logo. Southern wing. Cuts into centre square. But straight to Williams. A turnover. Hand pass to Saad. Long 60 metre drop. Part to Mackay. What out with Rothhead. Mackay's got it. <laughs> He's had an almost day. Harry Mackay hasn't wrapped his mitts around too many. And now he outmarks Roughhead in the one-on-one -on -one from the deep, quick entry from Adam Saad. He's going to kick a snap here too. Barely an angle. He's essentially right in front, slightly right of centre and only slightly. Man on the mark essentially in line with the goal square. Mackay snapping. Mackay goals. And Carlton get the hot start to the final term. It's taken just 90 seconds, and the Coleman medal leader's up to 49 for the year. Collingwood's lead down to two. Grandstand AFL. It's that kick coming back in the middle of the ground by the Pies. Williams was was um, was awake to it. Gives a beautiful, quick little handball. That's probably the first genuine one-on-one -on -one contest between Mackay and Ruffhead inside 450. Yep. There was no other players around. There was no other support for Ruffhead in that contest. So he had to stand there. Harry Mackay's a big man, but Roughhead's every bit as tall as him. So Mackay was just stronger, really, in that contest. Hands were really, really good. Terrific kick by Saad. Long, deep. Got it to the one-on-one. -on -one. Terrific start by the Blues. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where we're like the, uh, the Gaelic, where you're allowed to just uh, <laughs> line up like that? I hope not. I hope uh, not. Collingwood by two points as the Blues close early to start the final term. Bounce back in the middle. To Koning and Grundy. Grundy tries to flick it to the side. Elliot trying to run onto it. Couldn't get a disposal away. Adam socks it forward to Bianco at half forward. He's tackled by Saad. And the umpire will throw it up inside the middle. But I think about when we were kids. Lockett, Dunstall, Ablett, Modra, Sumage, Longmont. Like how good just kicks they were. Set shots. I was rolling a bit of back in my day. Here's a chance for Kennedy. <laughs> correct. The young kids, they're all going with it, Rama. Yeah. Silvani it's cool now. Swat it clear. Can't do so. Madgen onto it. Main for Collingwood. Receives the hand pass. Kicks out towards Bianco. Saad slipped over. And Bianco can't just quite regather as it rolls out of play. West Coast Eagles have taken the lead at the Adelaide Oval. They're 3-4-22 to Adelaide 2-3-15. Tex Walker with a goal there. So in the race for the Coleman medal, he's now up to equal second with Jack Revolt on 42 goals. Harry Mackay, as Corby touched on, another goal clear. Adams for Collingwood, breaks clear from the clearance. Hand pass to Main, back to Adams. Looks to oh. half forward. Majek racing back inside the 50, allowed Plowman to take an uncontested mark. Almost over the head of Walsh, couldn't pull in the one-handed mark. Does turn it over. Pendlebury's hand pass, trying to work up, getting it to Rusco. Hand pass now to Adams. Collingwood looking to attack. The kick looking for Murphy. Slips over. And Jones takes the mark. He's bounding out of defence. Pies by two, but Carlton have kicked six of the last nine and have all the momentum. He hits up Nunes. Goes long down the southern wing to Martin. Hand pass back inboard to Kerno from that launch pad. Kicks inside 50. Grundy and Betts compete. Spills to DeConey. Chucks it on the boot. Mackay, top of the goal square. The kick went over his head and out of bounds. And it was touched on the way through. So a boundary throw in forward pocket for the Blue Baggers. Collingwood by two points. 9-5, Carlton 8-9. Four minutes in. Toss back into play. Grundy in front position. Clears him. Betts trying to spin through traffic. Petrescu said, got it back to Betts. Threw it onto the boot and misses to the left-hand side. Collingwood's lead is a point. The Magpies have led all day. Four minutes gone, final term. Kick the first three goals. They kick five of the first six. It's seven of the last 11, though, to Carlton. And as close as they've been since Jamie Elliott kicked the first of the game four minutes in. Magpies by one. Maynard long straight down the middle on the kick out. Bouncing off the chest of uh, Jones. Took a deflection on the way through. Gains possession. Hand pass went to Adams, though, of Collingwood on the wing. Hand pass to Henry, to Noble, then to Main. Oh, by hand to Elliott. He tried to give it back to Main. They've turned it over. Half forward for the Blues. SPS to Fisher. Away to Williamson. Sweeping hand pass in the pocket. Finds Betts. Oh, Centering kick is superb kick. to Martin. Eddie Betts pulls his kick across the body. Had to kick <laughs> it 40 metres away. Kicked it 20 metres backwards. To find Martin in the corridor, he'll shoot from 40 out right in front. That is unbelievable yeah. by Eddie on his opposite foot. 
I was hoping he's going to go to left with Checky yeah, and pop it through. A little dribbler or something, but Collingwood are bringing it all on themselves, over, yeah. over possessing way too much. The setup deserves a goal assist. Jack Martin in the corridor from the heat guided missile oh. misses to behind, and we're all knotted up. Scores level, Carlton 8 11, Collingwood 9 5, six played final turn. They played out four draws, these famous sides, through 129 years of history. His main brings Collingwood back into play and finds Jordan Bergoe. Start of the quarter at full forward. Kicks towards Elliott on the defensive 50. He's got Quainor on the southern wing. Kicks to him. He marks just in front of Nunes. Initially wanted to move it quickly. Now looks into the corridor. Miss side bottom. And Williams takes the intercepting mark for Carlton. Zach Williams. Kicked a goal in the third quarter. In two minds. The sides go short to Walsh. Williams with four disposals in the final term. Walsh up to 30 for the match. Pokes it over the top to Ed Kerno. They're slowly creeping forward. Still 60 metres out from goal. Long towards Mackay and Bance. They flew in the pack. Jordan to go. He stayed down. Got it to Quainor for Collingwood. Back to Noble along the goal line. Now to Trey Rusco. He looks for a way out. Kicks towards Henry over his head. And it rolls out of play as Newman tries to work his way back. Not far from where Mitch Cleary is watching on. Guys, you'll be able to see Carlton's addition on the back of their jumper below the numbers where the uh, sponsor usually sits. They've actually got a name of each member in the back of our baggers campaign. So 26 different uh, names of members on the back of the jumpers today. Scores level for the boundary throw in. Grundy down to Pendlebury. Hurried kick forward for the Magpies. Elliott and Jones and Jones with size just leaping over Elliott to win the one-on-one. -on -one. He goes back for Carlton to Wiedering. Centre half back, scores level at 59 apiece. Collingwood's 24 point lead late in the second term is gone. We're now eight minutes into the last, and the Blues with all the momentum. As they shift it through Plowman and then Wiedering, Kerno, and Nunes has the footy defensive side of the southern wing. Goes short, very short to Cottrell. Eight played final quarter, empty MCG, Carlton and Collingwood all tied. A kick from Cottrell in the Mackay direction. Spills front and centre to Walsh. Possession 31. Hand pass inside kick. to Stocker. Short kick to Fisher. And Zach Fisher marks at centre half forward. 48 metres out right in front. Very smart kick by oh. Stocker. Nice touch, wasn't it? Yeah, beautiful. It's off the left. I was actually watching uh, Geordie to go in there, and he was actually manned up on Fisher at that last little stoppage. And he just let him go. He got the ball goggles on. Didn't quite track him, and Fisher just dropped into a nice little hole there, and Stocker was able to find him. This would be a good kick. And the West Aussie, Zach Fisher, right in front, searching for the extra distance. He kicks from the 50-metre arc. It's off target. It's on the behind line. Kept hey. alive. Betts front and centre. Betts snaps and puts Carlton in front. Eddie Betts snapping, roving superbly. His bread and butter, and Carlton lead for the first time today. Nine minutes into the final quarter, Carlton moved to 9-11-65, Collingwood 9-5-59. Well, it was unfortunate there for young Isaac Quaino. He just tried to spoil that over by flipping it over the top, not to get a big strong fist on it. The ball comes back into play, and anywhere he's been for his whole career, front and centre, that's where the percentage play is, coming to the front. Lesson learned for the young bloke down there. You do not allow a veteran, an experienced little forward pocket like Eddie Betts free at any stage. Do your work, get right on his back. He makes you pay, doesn't he? Well, Carla controlling the tempo of this quarter. 16 marks to five. So very much the way Carlton are wanting to play the game is Collingwood are allowing him early early in this quarter. So two, two goals, ten minutes, they're already taking a lead. I wonder if that just now releases the shackles for Collingwood where it opens them up a little bit with their play. Adam Ramanaskas with you on ABC Sport. The Blues have kicked the last three. Walsh gets the clearance of Carlton around his body. Out to Nunes on the wing. Takes the mark, middle of the southern wing. Looks inside 50. Mackay offers the lead. Goes longer than that towards Eddie Betts. Quainer up. up. Good mark. Claims the mark. 25 metres out from his defensive goal. Kick smothered by Betts. Williamson deep in the pocket. Dribbles it towards Ooh. goal. Hits the post. Into the left goal post, and Carlton's lead is seven points. Oh, the Blue Baggers would be going nuts. He had 51,000 back in round two when these two sides last clashed. Carlton holding a seven-point advantage. 
Carlton led that game for only two minutes. They've only led this for about two minutes, but the good thing for Carlton fans has been the last two minutes. 11 played final term, seven point lead for Carlton, having trailed by as many as 24. Noble marks the kick out. Comes to the member's side, long contest kick. In from the side, Henry landed heavily. At the back, Kennedy comes up with the footy for Carlton. Quick bomb back inside the forward arc. Flying is and Mackay can't mark. Spills towards Walsh. Shakes the noble tackle. Gets it on the right boot. Get the out. kick from Walsh is superb. <laughs> How good is Sam Walsh? Through traffic, breaking the tackle and still finishes from the pocket. Having another day out. And the 21-year-old provides yet another highlight for Carlton fans. 11 play final term. 10-12-72. Collingwood stuck on 9-5-59. Blues by 13. Wow. I'd like to echo yeah, Paddy Dangerfield during the week. See that we are seeing the emergence yeah. of something great here. And I, I totally agree. This kid can do it all. His ability to one shake off that tackle there and then stand up and execute that shot on goal. It wasn't the prettiest looking thing, was it? But doesn't he, matter. it doesn't matter when they're <laughs> going through a quick snap. It's all game sense. Ability to get it through from that angle, but I love his, his ability to w want to work hard in the gym, get himself stronger, to not just be that classified as that outside runner who can finish. Now he's a genuine ball winner who can get on the inside. Couple of big goals for the Blues, and all of a sudden they're out by 13 points. Back in the middle, Brown can't get the clearance at Collingwood. Here's Walsh once more. Emerges from the middle, kicks to Harry Mackay. Didn't have to break stride as he marks in the left forward pocket. They've found their mojo, Carlton. Well, Carlton are doing what Collingwood have done to teams in the past at the moment. It's it's just all Collingwood, uh, all Carlton in this in this last quarter. Inside 50s, 8-2. to two. Just dominating. The ball's living in Carlton's forward half in the first 13 minutes of this quarter. 49 goals for the season, leading the Coleman medal. Harry Mackay out to the left. Will kick from right on 50. Oh, it's yeah. a good kick. Got it. It's a great finish. Catch us if you can. Carlton overrunning Collingwood, and they're out by 19 points. 11, 12, 78 to the Pies stagnant at 9, 5, 59. The Blues hit the front at the nine-minute mark of the final term. And now, all of a sudden, they've opened up again. And again, it's Walsh out yeah. of the middle of the ground. Matt Kennedy worked extremely hard to get that ball free. Walsh then was good enough to take the ball right at his shoelaces and then deliver the ball inside forward 50 uh, to, to Mackay on a, on a really long lead. And this is why I just don't understand it. With it. He's such a beautiful kick of the football. Outside 50, left, po left forward pocket, and he's able to nail it, Clinchy. Bit of news coming through Rama that the AFL's confirmed that the uh, Wallabies game, France, and uh, the Wallabies that took place in Melbourne has now been reclassified as a Tier 2 exposure site. So uh, that's uh, a ramification for the six Sydney players and uh, the staff alongside 14 Giants players who entered via Gate 7. So none of the players and staff will participate in today's match on the Gold Coast and will now be forced to quarantine in accordance with the Queensland Government. So big breaking news there. So I'm not sure how many players affected as yet, but as Clinchy said, 14 players and staff from the Giants, six from the Swan. So the team sheets will look very different when that game takes place. To go through the centre square, kicks to centre half forward and Meyer check marks. And boy, do they need something to stop the bleeding here, the Magpies. Just go back, steady yourself. There's still plenty of time this game, plenty yes. of time. He's been a consistent performer, hasn't he? You always know what you're going to get with Brody Meyercheck. High work rate. He's honest. One He's or two goals a game. Carlton have kicked the last five in the game. They've kicked seven of the last eight to turn a 24-point deficit into this lead. Meyer check to peg oh. it back. He hits the post from 50 out right in front and just behind. Carlton by 18 now, 11-12 over Collingwood, 9-6. 15 minutes into the final term. It's become somewhat of a Carlton avalanche here in this final quarter. Newman bringing the Blues back into play. Runs his full measure. Kicks long towards Cottrell. Sets himself with Kennedy. Kennedy in from the side. Couldn't complete the mark. To Goey onto it for Collingwood. Hand pass back to Adams. To Quainall. Through traffic. Back to Goey. Just got his kick away as Betts closed late. Forced the error though. And Wiedering takes the uncontested mark. So just repeating that breaking news. Six Sydney Swans players and 14 GWS players and staff 
who ended via gate seven of the rugby. Australia and France have now been forced to uh, isolate and quarantine. So the team sheets will come through shortly, but they'll be changed from Sydney and GWS. More on that to come on ABC Sport. So Kennedy goes wide to Martin. Kennedy at half back Now Martin still in a similar position. Back flank. He goes back to Williams. Carlton now controlling the game. So 18 points in front. Having trailed for more than three quarters. Williams all the way back to Newman. They're going to have a crack down the city so, uh, the southern side. So at the city end, Newman goes long out to Plowman. Mark's back flank. Kicks along the boundary line to Silvani. Who takes the mark. Silvani short kick away to Kerno. Kerno marks just forward of the wing for Carlton. Slow build up for the Blues. Kick inside the forward 50. Mackay down there, working his way to the front, got a hand on it, spills down to Cottrell, 40 out, turns, kicks hurriedly, Goldwood misses everything. Out of bounds on the full to the near side. Carlton by 18 points, 16 and a half played final term. Start taking some risks through, uh, through the middle of the ground now, the Pies. Uh, the best play on team in the last month. They're going to play on now on every opportunity. Noble does just that, kicked. Out to Ruffhead, he'll get a 50-metre penalty, so we'll advance him from the right back pocket in the middle of the ground. Gives the hand pass to Dugowie. Oh. Middle of the member's wing. Ignored Noble, kicks wider still. And the mark taken by side bottom. Right half forward for the Magpies. Cameron's deep. Majacek in the pocket. Side bottom in two minds. A shallow kick towards Majacek, sport away by Wiedering. Murphy's underground hand pass, got it to Henry. One way, then the other. Hand pass to Murphy, snaps across his body to the goal mouth. Grundy's there, one, two. Couldn't complete the mark. Brown races in, tried to pick it up rather than soccer off the ground. It ricochets off Jones and through for a minor score. Yeah, he's spot on there, Clinch. He just needed it off the ground then, Cal Brown. 17-point Carlton lead at the 18-minute mark of the final term. Zach Williams is going to have a nice hot bath after this mm. game. Copped a couple of absolute beauties. Copped another one in that marking contest. Could be setting the alarm all through the night. <laughs> Rather to get up and buy nah, some ice. No, nah, just, just a bath. <laughs> <laughs> Newman to start in the back pocket. Long kick down the uh, down the a member side. Mackay the target. Spills to Kennedy. Kennedy kicks up into the front half. But Rusco collects on the hop. Hand pass away to Quainall. Goes wide to Pendlebury. Boy, he's been fumbly today. Always comes charging through. Puts it on the boot down to half forward. There's a free kick. A push in the back. Always was dumped by Maynard after he got rid of it. So it'll come back to Always. 70 out left half forward against the boundary line. We say that about Pendlebury. So uncharacteristic. There's been a few times today. It just hasn't been as many O's in smooth as we're used to seeing from him. As Always kicked to Silvani. Just ragdolls. Pendlebury out of the way and the free kick to come to Pendlebury in the back pocket for the Magpies. Carlton by 17 points and Collingwood needs something dramatic. At the Adelaide over West Coast by 7 points over Adelaide. Geordie goes a barrel up to the members wing. Bounce eluded my check. Elliot trying to get on the end of it. Little toe poke in the middle of the crowd. Newman's awake to that. Gathers. Hand pass back inside the defensive 50. Stocker can't gather. Taps it forward. My check came in from the side. And then Wiedering locks it up. He scraps with Adams for it. Adams got Dive. to his feet and he's penalised holding the ball. Dived on it. Dragged it under. Taylor <laughs> Adams can't yeah. believe it. Oh. But the <laughs> decision was right. He got to his feet, tried to break through. Umpire Brett Rosebury in his 450th game. 21 years of service, including eight grand finals and 44 finals. Wiedering kicks up to the wing. Mackay in the pack. Petrescu sitting in front. Takes the mark. Carlton by 17. Petrovsky Seaton's going to go short to Cottrell, and again they'll control they just the need tempo. To find one more, the Blues. Marks 28 to 13 in the quarter. Cottrell at the end of one here wants oh. to take on Hoskin Elliott, shakes him. Adams is drifting off the ground as Cottrell runs by him, kicks to centre half forward for Carlton. Big H is up, got mitts to it, can't complete the mark. Spills to Owies, turns, snaps, goalward. He's off target. Misses out to the left. Carlton by 18 points. There's news flying around all over the place. Three fixtures changed for round 19. And the more imminent news is that there's six Sydney players and staff members and 14 from the Giants that have been reclassified as Tier 2 contacts after attending the rugby. So they're out of the game this afternoon. The team sheets will look very different tonight for the Swans and the Giants. Oscar Elliott, 1-2 at half back. 
Kicks towards Majacek. Spoiled away by Wiedering. Down low, cleared Bianco. Stocker trying to tap it to Dow. Plain all came in. Won it for Brown. Hound pass to Bianco and Betts over the top. In fact, that was Rusko on the bottom of the pack. Betts trying to rip, rip it clear. Rolls clear and now Quainor has a go. He's going to get a free kick for in the back. And when we say six Sydney players yeah. and 14 GWS no, no, players. It's, so it's it, yeah, six it's, players and staff. Right. So, so they're be, not could selected. Be, it could the, be. No, so we're waiting to find out how right. many of those six and 14, so 20 are actually part of the playing group. Yep. Right. So the that's staff still, could be yeah. included in that as well. So there could be two players and 12 yeah. staff for the Giants, yeah. or there could be 12 players and two staff. Correct. So it's. Yeah, that, but what we know is that the, the players that are included is that won't be part of no. um, this, this evening's game. Which is interesting. Simon Lethlean said from the Saints yesterday they had one player who attended the rugby match who wasn't playing. But on this occasion, it's been upgraded. So we will wait until confirmation comes through. We're taking to that game at the completion of this. Carlton leading by 18 points. And Stocker has it at halfback for the Blues. Drives a kick towards Silvani. Oh. Rises on the back of Quaino. In Thank the long God. sleeves with the number one on the back. Serge would love that. He kicks a barrel inside 50. Doubles up towards Harry Mackay. Oh. Equally impressive mark. Carlton a play out of their skins. Well, I wonder where the mark from Bell Reeves impressed with that mark. As that, <laughs> was a, that was a nice climb. And a yeah. little tribute to probably his old man and his no no with a big barrel coming off the wing there. Oh, what about the sticky mitts from Harry Mackay? Couldn't that, touch it for three quarters. Nah, all he, of a sudden, he couldn't catch a cold. Harry has started to get involved in this final term, leading the Coleman Medal, and a chance to finish the match. Out to the left, he'll kick from 45 metres out. Big Harry comes yeah. in. Good night. Pumps the fist and leads Carlton to victory. Harry Mackay is able to put through. His second goal. And all of a sudden, Carlton are out by 24 points. They've done to Collingwood what they've done to sides in previous weeks. Five goals to none in this final term. 12-13-85 to the Magpies. 9-7-61. Well, Clenchy, it's five goals, four to two behinds in this last quarter. So that's just, just complete Domination. dominance. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing it easy now, the Blues. Now, winning all those crucial balls, they're one on one. They look desperate. They're, they're tackling in this quarter. Um, they're, they're shepherding. They're, they're running. They're overlapping. Uh, Collingwood, it was, it was always interesting. They've chased in the last couple of weeks and been able to overrun sides. They went in with the lead in this final quarter. They looked like they were safe early. They were playing safe, and it's cost them. They made a couple of early mistakes in the quarter. Carl were able to capitalise, and now it's, it's curtain. It's all over. Four so, goals a margin. So that was Harry Mackay's third. Pushes him past 50 goals for the season. First Carlton player in 10 years to have done that. Out of the middle, Walsh links up with Fisher. Kicks to half forward. Mackay hitting up. Can't take the mark. Spills down towards Crisp. He's, uh, he's bowled off it. Cottrell collects. Hand pass away towards Kennedy. Dumps a kick inside the forward 50. Petrevsky seaton Hand pass away to Kurnow. Bounces his kick to the top of the goal square. Noble collects. Breaks one tackle. Can't break the second. And the ball's held to him. We'll have a ball up. Right on the goal line here. Who was that last Carlton player to kick 50? Not fair. It was Andrew Walker. Andrew Walker. Daddy, yeah, back in 2011. And here's Mackay doing the ruck work right at the top of the goal square for Carlton. Slapped away by Maynard. Turns out okay to Bianco, and he kicks hurriedly down the wing. Nijek competes. Spills to Elliott. Hand pass away to Bianco. Kicks Collingwood into the middle of the ground, and Murphy... Dives forward to take the sprawling mark inside the centre circles. He gets up and heads wide to go. He marks 70 out at half forward. Shoots a hand pass off his knees to Elliott. Sizes up the sticks and in the end decides to hook his ball to the top of the goal square. Wanted Polter can't take the mark and Carlton can clear from the kick from Cottrell. Only for the moment as Roscoe is waiting for that kick. Hand pass to the go. He can he kick Collingwood's first of the final term. Runs to 50. Right to the goal line. Plowman's there. And volleys it over the goal line. So a 23-point lead, Carlton's way. Mitch Cleary on the boundary. Just an update from that game, as you mentioned earlier, Clinchy. Just the team sheets in from the Giants. Toby Green comes out of the side, as does Matt DeBoer, who was lined and named as medical sub. Tanner Bruin and Zach Sprowler into the side today. So we'll keep you posted, but there's two players affected at the Giants at this stage. 
A fascinating game, a big one for the Giants in the context of their season, and Sydney for that matter, having taken another scalp last week against the Dogs. You do wonder what would have been the tipping oh, point uh, to yeah. postpone the game. So Maynard, a little too cute. He yeah. wanted to just guard the football from the Carlton player who tried to pick it up. In the end, he decided to grab it and then delayed his throw to Harry Mackay and the umpire wasn't having any of that. He's pinged him for 50 for trying to delay the game. And so now Harry Mackay will come from the members' wing inside 50 to try and kick his fourth. Second time in a couple of weeks that Maynard's been done for that, isn't it? So he's got form. Trying to be just a little bit too cute, as you called, Corby. So I'd like to see Harry's kick this exact same way as he has those last two from outside 50. A sign of a developing key forward star oh in the game. Quiet for three quarters. He's kicked the last three of the game. And he's got four for the day. 26 minutes into the final term. Carlton by 29. 13-13-91. Collingwood stopped to a walk. 9-8-62. 27 travel final term. Well, it's come off the back of Weedering and Jones probably getting their way across half back. But also they haven't changed up too much in the midfield, unfortunately, for the Pies. They've... Just have not been able to get it out of there. All of the clearances at this quarter, only 6-4. Contested possession, 35-22. to 22. Smacking them. Inside 50, 16-7. to 7. Yeah. Led think... by Walsh and Cottrell in there. I think yeah, he... Cottrell's had a really good last quarter. Can he? Making sure he gets a game next week, yeah. which is good for the young bloke. <laughs> Sam Walsh has been very good all day, as we know. But Collingwood just haven't been able to fire a shot in this last quarter, which has been disappointing for him, considering how well they come home last week. Half-time at the Adelaide Oval. The West Coast Eagles with four goals to three in that... Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, four goals to three in that second quarter. They lead by two points at half-time. 4-6-30 to Adelaide. 4-4-28. Fisher in the middle of the ground. Able to break the Adams tackle. Got the hand pass to Saad. To Walsh. Back to Saad. Running towards half-forward. Feeds the hand pass wide to Cottrell. Trying to get around Brown. Feeds it back, though, to Plowman. Who chips it back to Walsh. Sliding in down low. has been played the mark. Another big afternoon for Sam Walsh. Possession number 37 as it goes short to Kennedy in the middle of the ground. Kicks wide out to the southern wing where Wiedering has space to run onto it. He can poke it out to Ed Kerno who tried to gather on the bounce. Corralled by Rusco. Kicks inside the 50. Silvani flies once more. Can't take the mark. Quainor onto it. Gets the hand pass away to Bianco. He can work the hand pass to Madgen and then back to Bianco at left half back. Still not out of defence. Now the kick. Looking towards Henry is spoiled away and Wiedering sees it out of play. Just on McCoy, I'm pretty sure it was the Essendon game earlier in the year. He was crook. He didn't touch the footy, Harry McCoy, in the first half. Yep. Kicked four in the second half. And again today, it didn't have a big role to play in the match up until three-quarter time. Comes out and kicks four in the final yep. turn. Sign of a maturing player. Oh. So up to 52 goals for the season. One goal for Tex Walker. So he's up to 42 with Jack Revolt looking to become the first Carlton Coleman medalist since Fev. In 2009. For the boundary throw in, Walsh, another touch. He's been excellent again, leading this midfield. A hand pass to Fisher, away to Williamson. Hand pass a little hot for Kerno. So uh, Brown races away with it. Cop the whack after getting rid of it as well. Lump says play on. Dugowie heads down to half forward. Elliott flies for the footy, no mark. Uh, Meyer Jack sockers it inside the forward 50. Rolling footy into the pocket. Newman, first one back for Carlton. Big clash of bodies. Just banging into each other. Stocker and Majacek, and Majacek comes off worse for wear. Real sore. Jeez, that was a big hip and shoulder. Brown's hurt his shoulder as well further afield. He's waiting for the trainers, and Majacek lying face down on the turf, and that is where Carlton are going to leave them. What a final quarter for the Blues. Having trailed at every change, they finish all over the top of their arch rival. So they snap a five-game losing sequence against the Pies. Carlton come home strong on the back of Harry Mackay to win by 29. We are the Navy Blues. We are the old dark Navy Blues. We're the team that never lets you down. We're the only team old Carlton knows. With all the champions, they like to send up. We'll keep our end up. And they will know that they've been playing against the famous Old Dark Blues. 
A sad passing of Serge Silvani earlier in the week. His grandson, Jack, playing out there this afternoon, took a hanger, kicked a goal. Carlton trailed for three quarters. They had to pull it out of the fire. Down by 11 at quarter time, down by 10 at half time, down by eight at three quarter time. And then the Avalanche just came with a rush. They kicked the last seven goals of the game, Carlton. Four of them to Harry Mackay. He finishes on 52 at the completion of round 18. The Coleman medal leader, the Blue Baggers, get a win over the Pies. We are the Navy Blues. We are the old dark Navy Blues. We're the team that never lets you down. We're the only team all Carlton knows. With all the champions, they like to send up. So the goal kickers in the finish, Harry Mackay with four singles to Silvani, Walsh, Kennedy, De Koning, Stocker, uh, Walsh, Betts and Martin. Meanwhile, for Collingwood, three for Henry. They all came in the first half. One to Elliott, Bianco, Cameron, Sidebottom, Hoskin Elliott and Majacek. Now, after some big finishes in recent weeks, Collingwood were goalless in the final term. It's their eighth goalless quarter of the season as Carlton finished all over the top of them. And Sam Walsh, the stud that he is, 39 disposals for the 21-year-old, 15 contested, five tackles, four centre uh, bounce clearances. He also had six score involvements to go along with a goal. What a display from the 21-year-old Carlton by 29 points. So the Blues with their seventh win of the season. They've now won three of their last five matches. And victorious in the Peter Mack Cup, the 27th edition of that. The thoughts of Brett Delidio and Adam Ramanaskis with you on ABC Sport. Yeah, well, it was well done to uh, Collingwood. Oh, sorry, Collingwood. Carlton late in that game. They just ran away with it, led by Harry McCoy off the back. But it was Sam Walsh. And his ability all day, he just does not slow down. I call for him to crack 40. He got one shy of that. <laughs> Disappointing, Sam. Well, I thought you could have done that. But, uh, mate, 39, please. And, and that incredible goal that he kicked just had his way in the middle of the ground in terms of winning it at will. Clearances, five of those. It's four centre bounce clearances. Just uh, He really set them up, didn't he? But Matt Kennedy was pretty serviceable as well in there. He gave him. You know, it's a good option inside. He had the 12 contested possessions of his 26 today as well. Six clearances. He's a bit of a presence around the ground too for a, for a midfielder, an ability to, to actually catch it. We see on the screen now, Jackie Silvani is a bit emotional out there. Obviously lost his grandfather during the week. It was a big week for him. Did well to, uh, you know, set himself, kick that goal. Took that nice hanger as well. But all the boys were around him, giving him a hug. It's a... An emotional time for him. Well done to him actually coming out and performing and, and helping his teammates out. But Carlton, too good in the end. They just they couldn't uh, find what they did last week. Collingwood, could they rammer? They, they really slowed to a halt in that last quarter. Contested possession, 39 to 25. Carlton's way in the last quarter. Inside 50, 17 to 8 in the last quarter. More efficient with the ball going forward. Harry Mackay finally got those looks that he wanted one on one. He kicks four. Four last quarter goals. Ruffetta was doing a good job on him until then. But the, what the, what a good maturing player does is they find a way. Yep. Like a lot of a lot of young key forwards can go, you know what, this is all too hard. This is all too hard today. You know, Ruffhead, experienced defender, he's all over me. But he found a way. He, he grinded out a game, was able to kick four in the last quarter to really win the game for the Blues. Uh, Walsh. You've already touched on him. Kennedy was very good. I thought Jack Martin was really good. Weedering early against my check was, I thought, was ordinary. But in the end, he's taken 12 marks, um, four of those as, as intercept marks. He's had a he's had a very good uh, very good game. I also I also thought Zach Williams was good. He took an absolute beating today. He smashed it, and he? a lot of players would have said, you know what, this is too hard. This is, I'm just I'm sore. He's caught one in the he's caught one in the backside. He's caught one in the back. He's caught the cork thigh. So it was all all the excuses were there for Zach Williams to say turn around and go. Nah, I'm just going to only go off now. Um, um, I'm injured. I'm sore. But he kept going too. And and to his credit, he had a really strong game. So credit to the Blues. They hung in there. 
They hung in there. Collingwood had their opportunities to really take the game away from them, um, particularly early in that second uh, second quarter. I think they got out by 24 points at one stage there in that in that second quarter. But the Blues just hung tough, and it was through clearance. You know, Paddy Cripps not there today. Kennedy comes in and plays a lot more midfield minutes. Sam Walsh becomes the number one banana in there. Goes away and has he has 39 possessions, five clearances, kicks kicks a telling goal in in that last quarter. So wins like this are wins that you remember when you don't have like Carlton got a lot out. They got a lot of players out at the moment, so you got to give them got to give them real credit off of this win. So Carlton winners. By 29 points. We're hoping Matthew Kennedy might join us post-match. Uh, we're going to head straight to GWS in Sydney, though, with the, the changes that have taken place there. The reclassification of uh, the rugby game between Australia and New Zealand being upgraded to a Tier 2 site, meaning Toby Green and Matt DeBoer are both out of the GWS side. So they've been replaced by Tanner Brew and, and Zach Sproul. Callum Mills, Harry Cunningham and Colin O'Reardon are out of the Sydney side with James Rowbottom, Dylan Stevens, and Ben Ronk to come into the side. So it uh, must be hard for Sydney and Giants medical <laughs> staffs, no doubt, who would be trying uh, to communicate this information to the AFL, but also to the, the coaches who would be trying to prepare for a match. Well, just keeping players separated from each yeah. other, particularly the ones that potentially have been exposed. So that's that's where the, the real tricky part is. Now, if, if any of these players have got the virus, well... The both teams will be down, yep. so they'll all become close contact of uh, contacts of that player. It's a really tricky situation here for for both clubs and the AFL to manage their way through it. Uh, Mitch Clear is down the boundary. Uh, Mitch, do you have much to add to that? No, just speaking to a couple of people at the Giants, Clinchy. The suggestion is that Queensland sees uh, these close contacts as as no tier system. So here in Victoria. Uh, obviously, Tier 1, 2, and 3, but Queensland treats them totally separately. So that's why the reclassification has come so late. And, and even though players and officials have provided negative tests in the last day since they've been up in, in Queensland, that's why it's all moved so quick in the last little bit. But the, the clubs are telling me the game is going to go ahead in, in 11 minutes. Yeah, it, it is going to become a problem too for the AFL just on that, as, as Mitch sort of quite rightfully outlines that. If you are trying to skip borders, one of the parameters that you often have to fill out to change state is have you been to an exposure site? So, yeah. And it, it's not so much about you know how close you were to the contact as you were when you're living here uh, yeah. and we're under the provisions we're under now, but that is going to become more difficult to move these guys around and, and get them in and out. No doubt. So the challenge to try and keep the competition going. Well, they may come back to Victoria. Well, they won't be able to move. Would yeah. they be allowed to move states or would they have to quarantine? If you're doing 14, 14 days, days. It's, you're staying in port. Um, yeah. But the, I think that they're going to want to limit the travel, which will be fascinating yeah. to see what happens next weekend. I think the uh, one of those teams is scheduled to play Essendon next week, who yeah. are already up there in GWS. Queensland. So that's. No, no, GW or Sydney is it next week? Uh, yeah, it's GWS, sorry. It's GWS. Essendon, so then they play, I think, Sydney the following week, yeah. Essendon. Yep. So they're already up there in southeast Queensland, and uh, Fremantle is the other team implicated in all this. They're meant to play the Swans, um, but there are teams across the competition now that have had players go to the rugby. I think we said yesterday there was eight teams that either had someone visit an exposure site or go to the rugby game, uh, whether that's players or officials. So um, it's starting to get really problematic for the game. We Which already know is, three yeah. fixtures have changed. It's going to be one of the great misgivings that clubs weren't able to communicate for players not to go along to that fixture. Uh, so we're going to quickly run out of time ahead of the Giants and Sydney, Clint Wilden, Ben Cameron, to call the action, Shane Wawoden and David Mundy. So we might get some votes for the yep. ABC Football of the Year. Brett Delidio? Yeah, I've given one vote to uh, Tay Adams. I thought he was probably Collingwood's best. John Noble, very unlucky. Jordy Go had a lot of it, but not a lot of contested footy not in the back half. Two votes to the guy we're hoping to speak to, Matty Kennedy. Bam Bam, one of my ex-teammates, 26, really stepped up in Paddy Cripps' uh, absence had the 26 tonight, and who else but other than Sam Walsh uh, with his 39 today. Did it all. Goals, clearances, contested work, runs all day. Love what this kid's doing. So Sam Walsh gets the three votes from Brett Delidio on Carlton's 29-point win over Collingwood at the MCG. Uh, always the narrative falls back to sort of David Teague and the review taking place and what's enough to suggest that Carlton are heading in the right direction. A final quarter like that can't be denied, Rammer. No, of course not. Uh, look... <laughs> I've said it all along. I think you know he's he's only coached forty five odd games, so I feel for him going through a process like this, being such a young coach. But you, you look at the way they played and the you look at the the effort they gave in that last quarter. They they clearly still play for him. And the maturity of the side to change their game after halftime. Yeah, 
given Collingwood were, were comfortably in control for three quarters. Yeah, and that's I think that's the most pleasing thing um, when you when you're still a, a developing team. How how you go about that? How you flick the switch? And um, what what Carlton were dominating today was clearances. That was that was evident from the start. But where they picked up in that last quarter, I thought was their pressure. They started the pressure calling was possession. They started to pressure any time a, a magpie player had the ball, and they coughed it up the pies. And and Carlton were able to to capitalise on that and score quickly. They play uh, North Melbourne next week, Clinchy at Docklands. Their wins this year, so they're now a seven-win team. They've beaten 14th, 15th, 16th, yeah. 17th. They play 18th next week. Their other three wins, they beat 10th twice. And the only top eight win they've got is, of course, Essendon, who are seventh on the table. So uh, that's their form line so far this year. It's You can pretty much take it on face value. They're seven and 10. Uh, they're well, Carl, 13th on the table. Carlton are be- beating the teams that they should. But then to go to that ne- next level... They haven't got a scalp this year. Nah, mm-hmm. they don't. And when, when they beat Essendon, they were, I think they were just travelling yeah. th- at that stage. So, no, nah, it's... they. Yeah, what, what's their run home? The Blues there. Yep. They've got so North Melbourne, Sydney and GWS in the next three. What have you got for the rest yeah. of the year? I've got North, St Kilda G- uh, and then Gold Coast. What did so, I say? Not that. <laughs> no. So <laughs> North, St Kilda, Gold Coast, Port Adelaide, GWS. So really the only top eight team they play on the run home is the power. Yeah. So Colin would have got Port Adelaide that's scheduled for next Friday night, Lids. Um, Pies fans would be optimistic about what they saw from Ollie Henry, but yeah. they weren't able to repeat that final quarter surge we've seen in recent weeks. No, and that's what I think we're all sort of hoping for, weren't we? A, you know, a real shootout come that last quarter. But, uh, yeah, you, as a Pies fan, you'd be pretty pleased with what you've seen from, uh, from Ollie Henry today. Kicked his first goal, which is nice. Trey Rusco was pretty good on the wing and the half back, had the twenty three today. I was like Quainer continues to, you know, just you know, build on his game. You know, he's playing up against Eddie Betts for large periods today, so very good from uh from him. A couple of little brain fades that happens with a young player learning his craft still, but I like what he does and we've seen Noble being rewarded with another uh, contract uh, contract uh, just recently, had another great game. So I thought um, you know, there's some some real things going on there but as you said about Pendlebury Corbs today, yeah. he, he was a bit fumbly. It's something that you're not mm. really sure. Um, well, we haven't seen from Pendlebury. He's a star and has See, been for so long. Their midfield was a bit of a concern, wasn't it? With it was. Kennedy going to Adams. Grundy couldn't impose himself against a young ruck you'd expect him to. And um, still side bottom was well down. Well, they, Pendlebury and side bottom really didn't play through the midfield today. They no. played around the edges. Wings. Yeah, of. for a lot, of, a lot of that day. So uh, you mentioned it a number of times in the call there that Pendlebury uncharacteristically fumbled a lot. Now, I know he's had trouble with his broken finger and hand and all sorts of things uh, uh, throughout the season, but it was very uncharacteristic. Yeah. He, he never, ever, ever fumbles. No. So, and, and side bottom, uh, I'd love to see side bottom now play a lot more half forward. I as think a, he did, didn't he? A fair bit today. As a junior, and I know he was a junior a long time ago, but he was a star across half forward. So maybe in the latter part of his career, that's where he plays. Thanks, Rama. Thanks to Brett Delidio, to Mitch Cleary, to Stu Baker, to Craig at the back of the box, to Corbin Carlton winners by 29 points. We'll now take you to commentary of GWS taking on Sydney with Clint Wilden, Ben Cameron, Shane Woden and David Mundy. So the Blues join the Bombers as winners on this Sunday afternoon of round 18. The drama continuing to unfold with players out of the Sydney and GWS game coming up next. We'll keep you all across it here on ABC Sport.